injury, DeAndre Swift from Georgia. Right. Um, he's all not of, a bad player. No, he's not a, a bad really player. good player. And their offensive line is one of their strengths. I expect to see a lot of two tight end sets to try to max protect for uh, for Jared Goff and to try to chip Nick Bosa. That is the key. So for me, I really, really, really want to see the Nick Bosa um, impact on Jared Goff's performance. Can you get in that guy's face? No doubt about it. And, and, and Taylor Decker uh, for the Detroit Lions, mm -hmm. their star left tackle, is out today. He is out today with an injury. Uh, suffered a finger injury earlier this week in practice. Uh, he's going to miss a few games for the Lions. So their first-round pick, who was brother, his brother yesterday, balled out for Oregon. I didn't even know it was his brother. But Pene Sewell uh, is going to play left tackle, I believe, for the Lions. And he played that at Oregon. So I believe they're going to move him over from right to left tackle. We'll get some clarification on that. But for the rookie, having to see, having to see Nick Bosa, Arden Key, D Ford, Eric Armstead, for that matter, He's going to go in and get some work right away. Baptize, baptism by fire here. Real quick, Jessica, I want to touch on something before we get over to the defense. Adam Schefter earlier today wrote a story which really had no meat in it. It was a bunch of fluff. There was, no was no meat in this story. It was something that we all knew about. But Schefter tweeted out one of the many reasons why the 49ers traded up to the three spot in this year's draft was the belief that the Patriots could trade up to three and beat them to Alabama quarterback Mac Jones. League sources told ESPN. The Pats didn't, but still got their man. Did you get Bomani Jones saying, I'm stuck on the idea that the Niners gave up all that draft capital to someone who wasn't starting for them week one. It still blows my mind. Now, this story, first of all, has nothing to it. It makes no sense whatsoever, whatsoever to me. Say if the Niners did move up to three with that mind frame of saying, we're going to beat the Patriots and Mac Jones. You're not allowed to change your mind on the quarterback prospects as you go through the draft process, as you go through all the talent evaluations. You're not allowed to change your mind and go select a quarterback saying, you know what, Mac may be ready to start right now, but this guy, Trey Lance, has a higher ceiling and more potential to take us to the next level. What's wrong with that? It's not a problem to bench Trey Lance for Jimmy Garoppolo just because you gave up all the draft capital. You get your guy. And you still got a guy who helped you get to the Super Bowl. This story, to me, has much to do about nothing. And yeah. ESPN is just trying to have a nice little news dump right before kickoff here on week one. Well, regarding Belmonte Jones, I mean, what does he know about 49er football? I'm Honestly, he's a very smart individual. I find him to be quite uh, extremely intellectual. But when it comes to actual functionality of running a sports team, he's the last guy I want to hear from because I don't think he knows anything when it comes to football. And especially when it comes to when you draft someone, it's not about what they look like day one. Okay, this is about the marathon, not the sprint. I am trying to find mm -hmm. the best overall player. If you said after one year in the Patrick Mahomes draft, I mean, Deshaun Watt, and would have been the guy. Oh my God, Deshaun Watson. Right. Deshaun's great, but you know, with a couple of years of uh, of perspective, we realized, damn, Patrick Mahomes is he's next level. I mean, look at the Josh Allen draft, Bonte. Um, people point mm -hmm. to that one all the time. Baker Mayfield was the, by far and away rookie of the year. Wow, he looked great. Whose future are you betting on three years later? You betting on Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield? So let's let's give it a little runway here. And here's the the beauty of where the 49ers find themselves. Unlike most teams that move heaven and earth to go get a quarterback. They actually have a functional, winning, high-level quarterback who can do a lot of good things for the organization. Right. So why throw the kid into the fire if you don't have to? Like, to me, yeah. this is the best of both worlds. And if we get a chance to see Trey Lance and they sprinkle him in with a little bit of the two-quarterback system, I mean, now we're, we're getting the kid's feet wet and we're not – uh, you know, damaging his his psychology, uh, his, his psyche, or right. having him go into you know some right. rookie tendencies that tend to happen. You know, right. locking on to receivers, yep. only throwing to yep. one guy, being mm -hmm. too quick to go down to the checkdown. Mm -hmm. Like this is all about the long play. So I am not panicking on week one. Yeah. To me, this is much to do about nothing. Yeah, no, I'm spot on, Shasky, because we, we think about all the quarterbacks who were thrown out there in a the fire. The Sam Braffords, mm -hmm. the Joey Arringtons, mm -hmm. the Jamarcus Russells. Hell, even Jameis Winston. Jameis <laughs> yes. Winston's on the second team now. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Mariota, he's on the second team now. Blake Bortles, all these guys, you can't throw a rookie quarterback out there and like, look, Trey looked really good. He looked really good. And if he started for this team, we touched on this. Mm -hmm. This is the best situation for your rookie quarterback since Ben Roethlisberger going yes. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have a great defense around you. You have a great running game around you. You have good skill positions on the outside. Uh, it's an ideal situation. 
Mac Jones is in a situation where we'll see with the Patriots what type of team they have here. And by the way, as Benjamin Albright says on uh, Twitter, and this is what we've been talking about and why nobody, they always go to the Patriots here, Shasky. The Niners moved up to three because Atlanta was going to take Trey Lance. And Atlanta's already admitted yeah. that, hey, we're going to sit at four and we're going to take Trey Lance there at four. We're going to wait for him to drop to us at four and see what the Dolphins did. So that whole Patriot Ponte. narrative that everybody's running with is just nonsense. You know, in golf, we have a term. It's not how you get it done. It's how many you get it done in. And that's all right. that matters right now when it comes to the 49ers. They selected Trey Lance. Who cares how they got to that point? I mean, we will find out, and history will tell us. If it's a good selection, we will turn it into a golden narrative, right? And it'll have this right. unbelievable backstory to it. If it doesn't work out, it'll be the exact opposite, right? Or something in yep. between. I think that both players fit what the other team is looking to do very well, meaning Mac might be a perfect fit in New England and Trey might be mm -hmm. a perfect fit in San Francisco. Why can't both succeed? Why can't both be very good players? I understand there's a law of averages game that we play when it comes to the quarterback. Only one can be good. There could only be one chosen one. I, I think this is one of those years where there might be four or five really, really, really good quarterbacks who perfectly fit the situation that they found themselves in. Why does it have to be that one's a bust and one's a superstar? Can't we just allow this thing to play itself out? I understand the 24-hour news cycle, but dear God, Bonte, who cares about that? Jimmy G's right. under center this morning. Jimmy right. G is under center in Detroit. This is a big game. <laughs> this is a big-time game. I am fired up, and if they sprinkle a little Trey Lance in the red zone and he gets in the end zone, Niner fans are going to be just fine was selecting Trey Lance number three overall. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. I do want to get to Bosa, though, because you brought him up. And earlier in the week, we played the sound where Nick Bosa was asked if whether or not he was going to be on a snap count. And he goes, no, there's no pitch count. <laughs> he brought the baseball term. There's no pitch count for me. He's going to be a full co here. And Pinay Sewell, uh, the young man out of Oregon, whose brother last, last yesterday against Ohio State played a hell of a hell of a game at the linebacker spot. He's a baller, too. I mean, um, what, what are they eating in that family, man? <laughs> the bloodlines are thick. Uh, but Daniel they're, Kelly, they're a former NFL defensive scout. defensive lineman, Bonte. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're, they eating. they're eating. They're eating defensive the, and, linemen. And the younger brothers eating offensive linemen and running backs. He's just exactly. popping guys left and right. Uh, Daniel Kelly, a former NFL <laughs> scout, said Sewell is closer to being an embarrassment than he is to a generational talent. Now, there's a lot of question marks about this young man as he got off to a rocky start in the preseason. And Nick Bosa, when you look at his first game back, mm -hmm. you look at cross side, you look across the field, and you say, man, I get to go against a rookie? This is a perfect spot for Nick Bosa to come back after play. basically playing a game and a half last. Not even a game and a half. He played a game in a quarter. <laughs> a quarter of football last season and had no sacks and only two tackles. Bosa's back, and he gets to go against a rookie. This is a perfect spot for well, Nick Bosa to come back and reintroduce himself to the NFL. Sometimes the box score can lie. And and what I mean by that is you said that Bosa had no sacks, and you're not wrong. I mean, B, you, you're, you're accurate. He was a menace in that Arizona game. Go back and watch it. Kyler Murray was special in that game and evaded multiple sacks. Bosa was everywhere. Same thing he did in the Super Bowl. You got to watch the game, people. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing. And just in general, I think this is a huge, 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 Huge opportunity for Nick Bosa to remind everyone why we thought he was a defensive player of the year candidate heading into last offseason. You know, Bonte, this is a perfect situation. Penny Swell, he's 20 years old. I actually think he's going to be a really, really good player. It takes yeah. time. You're moving from left to the right side. You're switching up all your footwork. You're switching up all your hand moves. You know, it, it's, it's very, very difficult, I think, for a young player to come in when you've been in a spread system and you got to come in and, and go to a more traditional offense that the NFL provides. We've talked about this a long time. There's a learning curve. Very few guys come into the league and do uh, what Quentin Nelson did for the Indianapolis right. Colts, which is come in and dominate. I think it's really, really hard to be a seasoned offensive lineman in college and step in and be functional. It's just really difficult. So this is a good matchup for Nick Bosa. And B, I'm going to be honest with you. If they can get a lead here, run the ball down Detroit's throat, you could pin mm -hmm. your ears back, get D Ford out there, get Eva mm -hmm. Cam out there, obviously get Nick Bosa out there, maybe a little Arden Key out on the edge. I would really like to see this entire defensive line come away with more than three sacks. There's no doubt. Fluster Jerry Goff, and we've seen that in the last couple of years with the Niners and Rams, where the Niners, remember when they introduced themselves to the world that they were going to be a legit contender mm -hmm. in the NFC West, 
They beat up Jared Goff and he only threw for 81 yards down there at the L.A. Coliseum back in 2019 in week number five uh, against the 49ers. So they've had Jared Goff's number. This pass rush is legit. We'll get to Fred Warner. We'll get to, we'll get to the secondary. What is this secondary going to look like without Emmanuel Mosley and Josh Norman? Will they start a rookie? Is it Diamador Lenore getting to start at one of the quarter spots? Or is it K. W. Williams? We'll talk about that on the other side. By the way, Shasky, shout out to everybody on Twitch. Yeah. Brought to you by Xfinity. People are ready to roll on Twitch. They are fired up. You got a couple people here. You want Sasa. Mostert will run for 150 today. Ooh. Mostert will run for 150. A lot of people here on the uh, on the text I said, uh, Lions upset? No way. There's no upset hey, happening Bonte. today here. What's you know up? the only upset is me eating my tri-tip before noon because I'm going to have that bad boy on that Weber <laughs> grill in the back. I can't wait. Harris Ranch dripped up your boy and gave me an unbelievable tri-tip. I've been marinating it for three days, just like the Niners have been marinating all off season to go after some Jared Goff quarterback. Let's go. Right, we'll, do some, we'll do some over-unders today, some over-unders. We'll talk about Shanahan, Dan Campbell, and much, much more here on the kickoff yes. show. Niners. Joe Shasky to Butcher, Bonte Hill, brought to you by Harris Ranch Beef. Elevate your tailgate, brought to you by Harris Ranch Beef. Legendary beef, legendary quality. Switching and saving with your local Geico agent sure is easy. It's
7th, I think, was my opening day press conference. I almost wish I wasn't being hard-headed with it, but I feel like you guys are being a little hard-headed to keep asking. I feel like I've already answered it, so we'll keep it at that. The kickoff show continues with Vontae Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. That's the head coach of the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, discussing the quarterback position here in San Francisco. He said the media was being hard-headed. He said he made his mind up a day before trading camp started that Jimmy Garoppolo would be the starter, and he's going to start today. We'll see how much Trey Lance plays. I know a lot of people are interested in that. But look at Jimmy Garoppolo in his week ones here, Shasky. It is very, very important because his last, his week ones with the 49ers haven't been so great. Think about 2018 against Minnesota, 15-33, 261, mm-hmm. one touchdown pass, three interceptions. Did not look good in that game. 2019 against Tampa Bay, his first regular season game since tearing his ACL back in 2018 in week three against the Kansas City Chiefs. 18-27, 166 yards, one touchdown, one interception. They didn't need to discuss last season against Arizona, 19-33, 259, two touchdowns. But he was off with his accuracy. He was off in the pocket. Overall, that's 15 and 9, 52 and 93, a 56% completion percentage for just under 229 yards, four touchdowns, four interceptions. He can't have a slow start today. Can't have a slow start on the road against the Detroit Lions today. Jimmy, especially if you want to just debunk all the questions about Trey Lance. Come out fast, come out hot, and this could be his job all season long. Yeah, I think he also just needs to play within himself, B. I, I think him trying to be something that he's not, that can get him into trouble. But that's that's kind of never really been Jimmy Garoppolo's thing. It's not like he's going to like roll out and try to rip a ball into a tight window 28 yards, 30 yards down the field. I mean, yeah, he has an occasional bad decision throw over the middle. But I think playing within himself, playing within the structure of the offense, that's one of his strengths. I think that's one of the hallmarks of Jimmy Garoppolo. For me, I really want to make sure that the ball placement is there. And that's how I'm going to tell if Jimmy Garoppolo is feeling good early. Is he hitting guys so that they can catch the ball and go upfield? That's the hallmark of not just the West Coast, but of the Shanahan offense. Hit a guy on his shoulder so he can evade that tackler, turn upfield, and get that extra six, seven, eight yards. Uh, play rhythmic football. You know, when I think when he holds onto the ball and he gets cement feet, he at times tends to make things worse, trying to spin backwards and things like that. I want to see him have that little tap, 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 boom, and rip. That's when I know Jimmy Garoppolo is in his mode. And and B, let's be real with you. Offensive line play has done him in, especially yeah. when you break down no all those week ones mm-hmm. of all those opportunities that he's had over the years. You started Mike McGlinchey as a rookie on the road up in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That was a tough game. Your number one tough. wide receiver was Dante Pettis, uh, the second <laughs> second round pick who literally isn't even in the league anymore. I mean, people forget that. Marquise Goodwin went out like that, literally like that. Yeah. And Daniel Dope. Hunter dominated in that game. Um, obviously, last year, the Arizona game. They had no healthy receivers, no Debo, no Ayuk. Yep. Uh, it was bad. Richie James Jr., I believe, was the number one. Kittle went down in that game. No, was, yeah, yeah. He, Richie James Jr. got hurt in that game. It, it, got hurt in that game. That's kind of my <laughs> point. Like, so, so I think they're the healthiest they've been in a week one. That's number one. But number two, I also believe with Alex Mack addition, which we haven't brought up right now, the center position is so important. When Weston Richburg played, they were just a different team. You know, and he, he's not the greatest of players. I think Alex is a better player at center than he is. We don't break down offensive line pay, but boy, it'd be nice to have Trent Williams, Alex Mack, Lakin Tomlinson, and that side of the offensive line just dominate today. I mean, I think that would no. really help this team just dominate. Does this concern you? All right, Josh Norman's inactive. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel Mosley is inactive. The Niners are going to start fifth round pick out of Oregon, Diamador. Lenore. Wow. He's going to start at one corner spot wow. alongside Jason Verrett. Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski Tart. Uh, obviously, your starting safeties here. We'll probably see a mix of uh, Hufanga out of USC. I love we'll him. probably see some Ombre Thomas. Of course, we'll see K. Ron Williams in the slot here. Yeah. But Diamador Lenore starting at corner for the 49ers. And you know what? Boy, is Jared Goff going to look over at number 38 and say, I'm going to pick on him. I'm going to throw at him. The Amador Lenore starting at corner, Shasky. You know, I, I actually really like this kid. And, 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 you know, I know that corner is just such a tough position to just go into the league and start guarding some of these elite receivers in the NFC West. It's a pretty soft landing spot for the kid. I mean, they, can, can most fans name the number two wide receiver for the Detroit Lions, even who play fantasy? No. 
No, <laughs> you're I definitely mean, not drafting him. Right? You're definitely not drafting him. So, so I actually think this is a pretty good spot for him. And forget Diamond or Lenore. If Diamond or Lenore is getting picked on, to me that tells me we're not getting enough pressure. Because it's not like they're going right. to boom, boom, and try to throw smoke screens his way and make him tackle. The kid looks like he can play. Like I do think he can play. Right. I don't know he does. who he is. I don't think he's right. a bum. I think, you know, I think the kid is, has earned his spot. And I like what I've seen thus far from him, being able to locate the ball down the field, turn his head and make a play to break things up like that's a skill that okella witherspoon seemed to never truly master so um with no mosley today i'm gonna be honest with you b i'm not mad at this like i'm not yeah. and i will turn and say forget the almond or lenore get after the quarterback and, and you know what detroit's gonna run a run heavy scheme anyway Jamal Williams coming over from Green Bay. Obviously, you mentioned DeAndre Swift, who, if he was healthy last year, ran for over 500 yards, yeah. eight touchdowns for uh, DeAndre Swift. And also in the passing game, 46 receptions, 356 yards, or 57 yards, excuse me, 357 yards and two touchdowns. DeAndre Swift is not a bad running back. Mm -hmm. Anthony Lynn is the offensive coordinator uh, in Detroit. We know he loves to run the football. He's been a longtime running back coach in the league. The Lions will run. They will run heavy. They will run a lot. So to your point, Lenore may not see much action here as they run a bunch of double tight end sets, try to get TJ Hawkinson, their star tight end, a former first-round pick, involved in the passing game. So uh, we'll see about that. You know, Shanahan, like in 2019, referenced the East Coast trip to start off the season. I want to play the sound here, Shanahan, yeah. about – Starting off the season with two straight East Coast games. Here's what Kyle Shanahan had to say earlier this week. I think our guys understand the challenges of going to the East Coast back to back. You know, I didn't totally understand that until I came here. I kind of everyone told me that you needed to go early, in, and I told them I'd never done that. I don't agree, and I kind of learned the hard way after watching everyone barely awake the first game. So I think our guys understand. Um, it kind of just is what it is, and I think you make the best of it. I mean, guys do enjoy being together. At least um, now when you do get together, you, you know, you don't have to necessarily be in your rooms the entire time. That, that was a tough part about Arizona, um, just with the situation the whole world was in. Um, but right now, you know, we're excited to go to Detroit, and when that's over, uh, we'll get a week at the Greenbrier and uh, then be ready for Philly. <laughs> going down to West Virginia, West hey. Virginia, the Greenbrier. I'm surprised they're not going to go to Youngstown, Ohio, yeah. where the Yorks and DeBarter Lowe's are from. But they did that in 2019. They went out there to Youngstown, Ohio, when they played Tampa Bay and Cincinnati uh, to start the season off. And a lot of parallels to that team, to this team. But 2019, they start off on the road. Rocky game in Tampa Bay, but they survived it with two pick sixes. And they win that game going away 31 to 17. Then they go to Cincinnati the next week and handle business before playing their home opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Same situation this year. You go to Detroit, right? Detroit's not expected to be any good. Then you go to Philadelphia after staying in West Virginia uh, for the week. This is a nice spot for the 49ers to get two road wins right off the bat. Going on the road trip, building that team camaraderie here, Jasky. And the Niners have been well equipped to go on the road and do this, man. They do this a lot. And I think it's a good situation for them to play these two teams mm -hmm. while staying on the East Coast. Well, B, it's a business trip. Look, I, these are two games, if we're looking at it just from a, a zoomed out lens, if you want to win the division, you don't just win these games. You win them emphatically. I mean, these are the kind of games that you establish who you are as an identity for a team. Run the ball. Get after the quarterback. Boy, it'd be nice to see this secondary, whether it's the Almond or Lenore, whoever, make a turnover. Like, when was the last time a 49er secondary was ball hawkish, if, as you will? Right. You know, like, it feels like forever. I mean, it really does. Like, even during the hardball years, they were more enforcers in that back end, mm -hmm. which I love that style of football. But they've adjudicated mm -hmm. it out of the league. Can you? You pick the ball off. Boy, it'd be nice to see a couple of Jared Goff little ducks floated in the air and somebody step in there and make a play. I would love to see that. But on the road, the, the key to any team that wants to travel, do you play stout defense? I think they do. And can you establish the run? I think they can. And does your quarterback have enough moxie to be able to stand up to the opposing crowd? There were very little crowds last year for the San Francisco 49ers. They spent a month and a half in Arizona, which I don't think we've right. talked enough about um, because of Santa Clara not allowing them to play. Right. I think this is the perfect quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, the best defense that has looked in a year and a half. Uh, I think everything is pointed in the right direction. Jam the ball down Detroit's throat yep. today and play suffocating I defense and win going away. No, I'm with you there. And look, uh, you think about the 49ers on the road. 
They've been really good on the road, especially yeah. the last two seasons, 12 and 4. So they've been a really good road team here as they take out the Detroit Lions kickoff coming up in 19 minutes. You're listening to the kickoff show with Joe Shasky, the Butcher, and Bonte Hill. And don't forget, Chef Toys, Elevate Your Tailgate, brought to you by Chef Chef's Toys, a kitchen and restaurant supply trusted by Girl Masters and Tailgate Kings. B. Visit cheftoys.com or a store near you. Oh, I'm going to have my Chef's Toys. I'm going to have my tongs. I got my grill ready to go. I got my Harris Ranch beef, my tri-tip steak. It's been marinating for two, three days. I'm fired up. It's week one of the NFL season. We got the Niners and the Lions. Let's do this. This is going to be a fun, fun game here as we look around the league here and a lot of juicy matchups here. And Look, the, the Niners, we've touched on this. They have the chance to get off to a hot, hot start played against Detroit and Philadelphia before a home opener against Green Bay, who will be without David Bakhtiari, their all-pro left mm-hmm. tackle. We talked a lot about Jimmy Garoppolo, but how much do you really think we'll see a Trey Lance today? Because that's the question that keeps lingering, keeps hovering over people's head. Here on Twitch, brought to you by Xfinity. Everybody's talking about Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you think we see from Shed Ahead today? Is he really going to trot out this two-quarterback system where the fifth play of the opening drive, he's going to say, hey, hey, go ahead, Trey. Go run the read option. Like, like are we really going to see hey, this? B, B, I'm ready to put like a dinner between you and me. Uh, let's say a burrito bet, because that's something that's affordable for me right now. A burrito <laughs> bet. I burrito bet you that Trey Lance goes out there just for the very first play, just to screw with everyone's mind, to say, quote unquote, he started the game at quarterback. What do you think about that? I think that's how that's how arrogant Shanahan is at times. Yeah, I think he, he might does. actually put Trey Lance in there the very first yeah. play. Forget the first series. The first play just to do it and then trot him back off. Yeah, that could be hilarious if he does that. And I can see Shannon, look, Shanahan's arrogant, but he's not stupid. I don't think he's going to employ this process at all, especially mid-drive, mid-drive going out there trying to trade. But if he did do that in the first play, it would be hilarious. By the way, a lot of people on Twitch here and YouTube asking, asking about Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon, folks, on Twitch, if you, in case you're just joining us here, or the text line, Trey Sermon is inactive. It's not because of COVID-19. <sighs> It's because the coaches feel like he isn't ready to go. So he's going to have to work his way back up the depth chart. Elijah Mitchell and Jamichael Hasty will back up Raheem Mostert. It is a coach's decision on why Trey Sermon is not playing today against the Lions. So let me ask you then, B. Uh, I'm high on Jamichael Hasty. Elijah Mitchell, we'll see. What do you think happens today with Raheem Mostert? Because I don't love him getting 25 carries a game. I like him in that 12 to 18 range, and I like a, a couple of swing passes. I want to get him right. the ball out in space. But I do think that there's a limit where you hit the threshold, and then it's a depreciating process for Raheem Mostert because I don't want to wear him down week one. How would you delineate the rest of the carries for this uh, the backup running back situation? You know what? I need Mostert for 20 carries. I need Mostert for 20 carries. Uh, give to Michael Hasty 10. And Mitchell, who didn't know where to line up, <laughs> I worry about a rookie on the road yes. playing in this environment. You know, fumbling, uh, holding, totally. holding on to the ball. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing where to go with the RPOs or whatnot. It's got to be heavy Mostert, and it's got to be heavy to Michael Hasty. Those two guys, which, look, and now it makes you wonder, why cut Wayne Gallman? When you had a veteran in a place, why cut Wayne Gallman really if you're going to enact, if you're going to deactivate Trey Sermon? It just doesn't. I This one came out of left well, field. I did not see this it, coming at all. Is this one of those, you know, immaturity off the field stuff? Is this one of those things where the guy hasn't prepared uh, in the classroom? Is this something that he did on the practice field? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. When I saw this, I said to myself, my God, did I miss something? Is he hurt? Is it, is it, a, is it, a, is it an injury? And now you're saying, no, it's more of a disciplinary thing. So then my brain automatically goes to what kind of disciplinary action is this because of off the field? Is this, you know, immaturity in the classroom like I keep bringing up? Or, or is this something on the field? B, we need to get some answers on this. Now, we're probably not yeah. going to get them until the post game. This is not good well, for the young man's career. But, I hope it's a blip in the radar because the Niners really whiffed when it came to Reuben Foster, and he had some off-the-field yeah. stuff, and it happened early and often, and it was like, all right, we got to tap out on this after one year. Well, you know what? Um, 
You really believe Shanahan's going to give us some answers on this? That's that's why I started chuckling because no. Shanahan's not going to dive into this. He's going to say it was a coach's decision, tell the media that they're hard headed for asking the question, and move along. Now, back in 1981 and 84, you want some good omens, Niner fans? Here's a good omen. In 81, the Niners started on the road in Detroit. You know what they did? They won their first ever Super Bowl. In 1984, the Niners started on the road in Detroit. Guess what they did? They won their second Super Bowl. Will this be number six? Mm -hmm. As we see the Niners open the 2021 season, Shasky, do you believe this is a Super Bowl-ready team? Even with the question marks about the quarterback position, but when you look down the roster, the offensive line, the tight ends, the receivers, the defense – is this a Super Bowl yeah. ready team? The way I look at this is is very similar to uh, you know video games in that you know there are certain teams that start on level one, right? And and I think that's where the Forty mm-hmm. ers are starting. They're on level one, and they have to prove it through a couple of weeks before I can start to put them in that Super Bowl category. And then there's teams with Tom Brady, like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are established. They hit level one, and then they find the cheat code, and they hit the Super Mario Brother pipe, and next thing you know, right. they find themselves in level eight. And they're already Mm -hmm. ready to go. So they're already at a higher entry point than where the 49ers are at. I don't think the 49ers quarterback situation has me as confident uh, as the Tampa Bay situation where I can say they're leveled up um, on the competition. I think they start at the base of the mountain at the very bottom. They've got their backpack and they're going to have to trek themselves up before I can put them into that category. That's just for me. And that's just for me. I have a hard time here today without seeing this entire unit offensively play together during the preseason or defensively. I have a right. hard time saying they're a Super Bowl contender. I think there's only about four or five legit today Super Bowl mm-hmm. contenders. Now, as the season plays out and we have attrition and we have injuries and teams mm-hmm. step up or step down, things can change. But right now, no, I think they're a 9-10 win team, potentially. Maybe they could be a 12 or 13 win team if everything breaks the right way. But they have to go out and prove it. That's the beauty of the NFL. Yeah, no doubt. And that's why I think this start, playing against Detroit, Philadelphia, and Green Bay. Now, you got to take one game at a time. There's no doubt. You can't look ahead to Philadelphia. you got to take care of business today mm-hmm. where the Lions are going to be jacked up for a home opener. It's the first game under Dan Cam- Campbell. We had the super fan on Dylan Henderson uh, Friday on the morning roast, uh, Shasky, the mm-hmm. Lions super fan, a.k.a. Mysterio. They're all in on Dan Campbell. A 80% approval rating so wow. far in the city of Detroit for Dan Campbell. You got Anthony Lynn, a former head coach. He knows what he's doing. He's going to be called to the offense. Detroit's going to be fired up at Ford Field. They will be fired up, so you can't overlook this football game. I think the Niners should be able to win 11 games. They should be able to win 11 games. If Jimmy is Jimmy, the Jimmy from 2019, or a little bit better than 2019, and if he's starting, that's this is an 11-win team if their health is right. If the health is right, you got guys in their prime. Nick Bosa hasn't even gotten in his prime. Fred Warner Jr. is mm-hmm. entering his prime. George Kittle is entering his prime. You got ballers on this football team. I'm expecting 11 wins. Let's get some predictions here. Or actually, first, other week one matchups you got your that you got your eye on. Are you looking at Seattle and Indianapolis? Are you looking at Arizona at Tennessee? Are you looking at the Rams and Bears a little bit later? What games are you looking forward to around the league here, Shasky? I'm pulling for the Bears to, to knock out the Rams. The hipster <laughs> the hipster NFL pick to go to the Super Bowl. The hipster NFL. Matt Stafford is my MVP prediction. Matt Stafford, win a big game for Christ's sake before I can put you in the MVP. The guy has won above 500 seasons since Calvin Johnson left. Get out of here with that. Number one. I, I'm rooting. I, I'm really looking hard at this Tua versus Mac Jones matchup. Like this is an intriguing Week One matchup to yeah. me. Maybe I'm alone. Maybe I'm just a sucker no. for quarterback play. I find that to be a very fascinating and tantalizing matchup. And you know, I'm always rooting for whoever Seattle's going up against because I want right. to see Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson lose at any particular moment. But uh, that, that's why this 49er game is so important. B. You look at some of these other matchups, you can't be losing to Detroit when the Bears are going to be going up against the Rams, and that feels like a victory for the Rams before the game's even played because Andy Dalton's starting. So you got to rack these wins up wherever you can get them. No, no doubt. And Arizona going to Tennessee to take on Derrick Henry and Julio Jones and A.J. Brown. 
Cal, uh, Cal Murray going uh, against that defense there. We got to see. I, I'm, I'm going to be watching that game. Seattle, Indianapolis to debut a Carson Wentz with the horseshoe mm-hmm. on his helmet. Indianapolis has Super Bowl aspirations, too. They're a dark horse Super Bowl pick for a lot of yeah. people. Uh, Quentin Nelson's going to be playing in that game. So looking around the NFC West, no doubt. And then Zach Wilson against Sam Darnold. The NFL is so genius. <laughs> they're best. they're geniuses it's when it comes best. to these schedules. Dude, Zach Wilson, knowing that he's getting drafted by the Jets, oh, let's have the Jets go travel to Carolina where Sam Dardo has to face his former team in his debut for the Carolina Panthers. So I'll keep my eye on that. Some quick over-unders before yes. we sign off here. Over-under, 249.5 passing yards for Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm going to go under because I actually don't think he's going to play a lot in the fourth quarter. I think Trey Lance is going to get a lot of looks. I think it's going to be a tight first half. Niners are going to blow their doors off in the third quarter. I don't think Jimmy's going to have to throw. He's going to throw for a buck 50, though, in the first half. All right. I, I'm going to take the under. I like We had an over under 225 and a half on Friday. Took the over there. I think he's going to throw around 240, okay. 245. Okay. I can dig it. I, don't, I, I think they're going to run the I ball a lot it, here. I can dig it, Booker T. All right, all right. Booker T, um, Harlem Heat. Over, under, two and a half sacks for the defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm over, 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 over. That's what I'm hitting here. <laughs> I got Nick Bosa with one and a half sacks. I got him and D Ford meeting exactly at the navel of Jared Goff in the first half of this game. And I think Jared's going to be skittish after that. And I think the young rookie, Penny Suel, will have a master class on how to get cooked by Nick Bosa today. Look out for Ibukam. I think Ibukam yeah. is going to have a big time game in this one because I expect Detroit to try to throw early on first and second down just to back off this 49er linebacker play off the line. So look for Ibukam to clean some plays up. Last one here. Over under snaps for Trey Lance. I'm going over. I'm going to go over, over under. In the first hold on, half. hold on, hold on. Let me give you the over under. Four and a half. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go over. I, I think he hits that over in the first half. I think he's going to have a half dozen snaps in the first half. You're going to see a ton of that read zone action, whatever the hell we're calling it these days, with him and Mostert, where he's going left, Mostert's going right, and the defender's eating dirt. I expect, well, or AstroTurf, I expect a big-time run game, heavy p- game plan, and I think Trey Lance is going to be a big-time part of that. Forget him throwing. I think he's going to be a part of the run game for the schemes and whatnot. And I actually expect them to do some jet sweep action as well because that's an element we haven't seen out of the zone read yet in the preseason. you got to believe Kittle, Ayuk, Debo are going to be involved in that jet sweep action. I'm so fired up for this game, Vontae. Week 1 Niners! It's here. Look, I'm going to go under. I think Shanahan is pulling our legs here. I think he's going to go with Jimmy Garoppolo the entire game. The entire game. Okay. Now he may get a few snaps in the red zone here. I, look, don't get me wrong. I want to see some Trey Lance. I want to see some Trey Lance. Heck, I want Trey Lance to start, to be honest <laughs> with him. But that's not happening here. I, I'm going to go under. I think Shanahan is pulling our leg here. Final score prediction as we sign off here on the kickoff show. I got 34-10, 49ers. I got 14-10 at halftime. Niners blow their doors off in the third quarter, pin their ears back, and it's a sackathon. I go 27-16, Niners. 27-16, Niners. They'll cover the spread. They'll cover the eight and a half. Uh, I'm not sure what the over-under is because I'm not betting on this game. I bet on a game yesterday early in the morning, Ohio State, Oregon, and I was done at 11 (laughs) o'clock. So my debating is done for the next couple of weeks. I've been on a cold streak after starting red hot here. By the way, we're going to be back after the game, immediately after the game. For overtime. Yes. Overtime is back. Our guy, Ron, is saying, I've never heard Shasky and Bond saying this Sunday morning. Well, you haven't been listening to Sunday mornings at 95-70 game because we've been here the last four years uh, doing the kickoff show. But right after the game, overtime. And it's going to be the listener show. Yes. 888-957-9570. It's going to be all about Line you and your thoughts on week number one immediately after the game. So we'll be back. A-B. Enjoy Lions and Niners. Week one is finally here. Kickoff coming up here. That's it for us. I we'll love see you, you right after the Let's game. Go hey, by the way, thank you to Sterling. Thank you to Evan. Great Whoa. job back there at the studio. Shasky, I'll see you after the game. Enjoy the football game. Oh, let's go. <laughs>
Francisco offense. Pressure coming. Garoppolo hit as he throws. A wobbler down the sideline, and it's caught. Debo Samuel with the catch and trying to turn on the Jets. He'll take it all the way for the touchdown. 79 yards, the lob from Garoppolo to Samuel, and San Francisco extends the lead. And it was that type of day for the 49ers. We'll get to the good news. That was certainly one of the bright moments of the game, a 79-yard pitch and catch. Jimmy Garoppolo right in the pocket getting sandwiched there, getting smacked. Debo makes a great adjustment. He goes, catches it, and runs. Scamper 79 yards. Niners are rolling right now, 41-17. to Jimmy Garoppolo at the moment, 16-24, 303 yards passing. 303 yards passing, one touchdown pass. Elijah Mitchell filling in for Raheem Mostert. He has over 100 yards. And Debo Samuel with eight catches for 178. Mm. A monster day for those guys. We got some bad news a little bit later. But Shasky right off the bat, Niners go up to Motown and handle business. Yeah, they, they look absolutely spectacular. Nick Bosa just looked fantastic in this game. D Ford looked absolutely fantastic. What a big win. What a big win for the 49ers. Now, we'll see who ends up being healthy and who's not in the severity of some of these injuries. Debo Samuel, I, I, I tweeted this out about halfway through the third quarter. This feels like the best wide receiver game uh, going back to 2013 opening day. Green Bay against the 49ers, the final opening game at Candlestick for Anquan Bolden uh, and the 49ers in 2013. Debo was spectacular today. I thought Elijah Mitchell ran with vision and purpose and physicality and speed. And I thought this offensive line looked really good. And I was really happy to see Jimmy Garoppolo some Trey Lance stuff left a lot to be desired, but it's hard to nitpick a blowout win against Detroit. Yeah, the only thing we'll nitpick about is the injuries. Of course, Raheem Mostert, two carries, 20 mm. yards. He left the game with a knee injury, which left the door open for Elijah Mitchell to go over 100 yards. He had a nice 38-yard touchdown run. Great blocking up front by mm -hmm. George George Kittle, Mike McGlinchey, and uh, Charlie Warner, the young man out of Georgia, the tight end, who they selected in the seventh round in 2020. He looked yeah. really good. Debo looked like a wide receiver, number one. And last season was a lost year for him. He gets a Jones fracture in the offseason. He later gets hurt during the season. Just an incomplete season for mm -hmm. Debo as he wasn't able to get in the best shape. Well, this year he looks like he's in shape. He looks spry. He looks explosive. And boy, what a difference is a healthy Debo making this offense here. And we'll get the Ayuk. We'll get to Trey Sermon. We'll get to the Jason Verrett injury as he walked off the field crying. It makes you wonder how quickly could Josh Norman be ready? Do the Niners, dare I say, call Richard Sherman in case there's a situation at the cornerback spot? Um, but overall, a good offensive day when think about it. The first snap of the game mm -hmm. for the Niners offensively was a fumbled. Uh, center exchange, a snap from Alex Mack to Jimmy Garoppolo. They fumbled a snap. Detroit recovers, and the Niners are able to still hold on and not give up the three points there. Detroit misses a field goal after having a turnover on downs on our first possession, and the Niners were, were able to withstand some early miscues offensively. Yeah, and, and, and Bonte, we got to kind of unfortunately play the waiting, waiting game right now. What's going on with Jimmy Ward's injury? What's going on with Jason Verrett's injury? Raheem Mostert's injury? Wait, did Jimmy Ward Jimmy Ward get hurt too? Yeah, Jimmy Ward went down late in the game. It looks like he's going to be okay. I, I don't know. He's not out there now. They've got all the backups in there uh, as we speak. Obviously, it's blowout time here. Um, but yeah, he went down with an injury at some point. I'm not sure what the severity is on that. We will see. But this, uh, again, man, look. The, All right, the game. so Jennifer Lee Chan, okay. Sterling, good job with this one. Apparently Sorry. he had cramping there, gotcha. cramping for Jimmy Ward. I thought maybe he just had bruised feelings for getting juked <laughs> in the open field by DeAndre Swift. What a terrible effort that was. I mean, he's not going to like the film study. Jimmy Ward is one of the more outspoken 49ers, yes. especially on that defense. And DeAndre Swift just made him look foolish there. So he left the game with cramps. He's back in. Uh, Jason Ferrant. Yeah. Jason Verrett, uh, Jason Verrett, excuse me, who we know has dealt with a lot of injuries from his Charger days. According to Matt Mayoko of NBC Sports Bay Area, Jason Verrett was taken up the tunnel on a cart. Mm. He was mm. absolutely distraught as he required help to get into the locker room. Uh, John Lynch was uh. with him there. That does not sound like good news for Jason Verrett.
Well, I mean, what do they do now? I mean, you were referencing a tweet earlier today. I saw you put out there, Josh Norman, you got to get up to speed. The guy that they signed this last week, would you consider bringing in Richard Sherman? I mean, do, do you really think about bringing him back? Do you consider making a trade for the kid from the Jacksonville Jaguars and Henderson, who was rumored to be on the block? Uh, I think I think you're open to a lot of different things. Deonor Lenore played in this game, didn't really get tested too much. Uh, I thought Detroit did a fantastic job running the ball early in this game. B, uh, keep it real with me, though. First play of the game under center for Jimmy Garoppolo and he fumbles the snap. I was not thinking it was going to be a good day, but the defense holds, and Campbell goes for it on fourth and one early in the game. What were your opinions on that whole sequence? Yeah, the fumble snap on the first offensive play. I just kind of laughed about it as Detroit scores a touchdown. It's now 41-23. to TJ Hawkinson with the easy uh, catch of a flat there to get Detroit. Yeah, that was a two-point conversion, actually. So it's 41-25. to 25. Detroit will go for an onside kick to try to get the ball back and make a game of it here. But the Niners are covering right now. I just started laughing. I was like, geez, this is how the season's going to start for Jimmy Garoppolo. Here come the question marks and mm-hmm. all the Jimmy haters started <laughs> coming down the timeline here. Oh, man, he can't even get the snap right. He's feeling himself. But you know what? Jimmy Garoppolo bounced back with a very good first half. 9-12 to 12 in that first half, 136 yards. Yeah. It was precise, was on point. No Jimmy owed no throws today. Yeah. He looked really good in running this offense. I thought Trent Sherfield looked spectacular. I mean, we're going to talk about Debo Samuel all week, and, and with good reason. I mean, Debo looked healthy and looked fantastic, and it was great to see him get the ball in space and run, wasn't it? I mean, it was really good to see him out there passing, uh, catching passes, but I thought Trent Sherfield was the guy for me who looked really good up. It looks like the Detroit Lions did an onside kick, and they recovered the onside wow. kick off this of is the a terrible ending. There. This is a terrible ending for the 49ers. And you know what? All those people who bet the Niners at minus eight and a half are now worth. They're now worried now. They're now worried. That's a terrible play. George Kittle ball bounces right off of George Kittle. He taps himself in the helmet. Detroit gets the ball back. And in situations like this, when a game is already decided, this is where guys get hurt. Mm -hmm. When you have to play extra snaps in a game, that means nothing. Now, real quick on Jason Verrett, a lot of people are already saying, man, Shanahan should have pulled him. He should have pulled him. This is a joke. I don't agree with that because it's not like you're dressing 90 guys on an NFL roster. You're dressing basically 48 Mm -hmm. guys on game day, 48 guys on game day. And you have two rookies there, Ombre Thomas and D'Amador Lador playing at corner. Dante Johnson's one of the backups. Mm -hmm. You already don't have Emmanuel Mosley. So Jason Verrett being in that football game with Detroit running three, the four wide receiver sets, I'm not mad at Jason Verrett being in that game. It looked like a really freak injury for Jason Verrett on that turf, yeah. backpedaling, trying to stay with the receiver on the cut. Things happen in the NFL. Yeah. It's an unfortunate situation, but I'm not going to come here and, and go down Shanahan's road saying that, ah, oh, you needed a bitch, Jason Verrett. I, I had no problem with him yeah, being in the game I, at that point. Bonte, I'm 100% with you on this one. I think it's really unfair to play the results and criticize Shanahan here. I mean, Gronk famously got hurt on special teams, up six touchdowns for the New England mm-hmm. Patriots many years ago I've never saw anybody ripping Belichick for something like that look you got to go out and play the game that could have happened in the first quarter that could have happened in the fourth quarter you could say hey take a guy out this and that. but to your point they, they have nobody beat they have nobody right. and guys were nobody. dropping like flies no matter what that is what happens in the NFL I can already see the obvious overreaction to injuries every single team is licking their wounds right now coming out of week one because there isn't a lot of hitting in training camp there's not any hitting during the week this is what happens. The game's violent. It's unfortunate, but sometimes right. sports happen, B, and that's what happened right there. I feel really bad for Jason Verrett on a, on a personal level. We know how hard he's fought to come back on, on a professional level, what this means to the 49ers. This could be a major injury. I mean, a major, major injury. Look, as great as Nick Bosa looked to D Ford. God, dude, great to see D Ford out there. He looked okay. fantastic. Contavia Street looked fantastic. My goodness, if they're missing their top corner in a division where Tyler Lockett's going crazy, DK Metcalf's going crazy, the Arizona Cardinals are up big on the Tennessee Titans, wow. we get to see the Rams later tonight. I mean, they need to find somebody as a corner, and I don't want to panic here because this is a great win. I mean, this is this is a great right. win on the road, but darn, it came at a price. 
No, it came at a big time price hitter. Niners overall with three sacks on Jared Goff. D Ford had a couple pressures there. One on the third oh. down, one on the pick six by Drake Greenwald yeah. there late in the second quarter to give the Niners a 28 to 10 lead. D Ford, which, you know what, Shasky? It's now the sound bite is not going to be such a funny one. <laughs> D Ford looks good. He looks really good at Bosa. Seeing him just punk Sewell, yeah. the young man out of Oregon, left and right now. Here we go again. Another 49er walking off the field. Number 45, Flanagan. I can't tell the name, but yeah, Flanagan. Man, this is this is bad. This is bad. A lot of injuries here late in the fourth quarter. And you know what? To a bigger point here, as we do shed poetic and it shed some positive light here, the problem with not playing in the preseason for a lot of these teams, you play three snaps, you play yeah. five snaps, you don't play a quarter. All of a sudden, you go into week one, you got to play 60 minutes. <laughs> yes. And I'm seeing guys all yes. over the league get up slow, leave with cramping. It takes you guys like a month now to get up to speed. So yeah. uh, the point. lack of playing in preseason, if you're not going to play these guys in preseason, be prepared well, to suffer some of these injuries that we're seeing in week one. During the week, you can I can kind of break this down. I, I do think they need to expand these rosters, especially if you're gonna have 17 weeks of the season. You're not allow allowing the hitting. Like let us suit up more wow. people on game day. Real, There's no doubt real about quick, it. Real quick, Shasky. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Davis is reporting reporting saying literally just got off the phone with my baby bro. Uh, ACL. ACL is a fear there with Jason Verrett. Oh, ACL injury. That's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Bonte, that's not good. You know, and then no, it, you, you get the news right before kickoff that Trey Sermon's going to be inactive. You look at the snap count for someone like Brandon Ayuk, and it's just something seemed a huh. little off today. I do want to hear from the fans. 888-957-9570. Line them up. Obviously, 49er overtime postgame show here. Bonte Hill, Joe Shasky. I mean, where are you at right now as Detroit scores another touchdown late, getting this one real close? Oh, boy. Oh, wow, a, well, a lot of people, how about this from a gambling aspect? This is why I don't bet on week one. This is why I kind of take a couple weeks off early in the season. The Lions were eight and a half point underdogs. Eight and a half point underdogs. Oh, and pending this two point conversion, they may cover the spread. Yeah. They may cover the spread here. So this two point conversion for a lot of people in Vegas is, man, this is huge. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge for well, a lot did, of gamblers here. What did you think about how they employed, uh, deployed, excuse me, Trey Lance today? Obviously, he gets the first touchdown of the year on the 49er, a little read zone, little pass out into the flat. That was a really nice pass. But uh, interesting how they used him today. I didn't love it, to be totally honest with you. I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was humming. I thought it took away from some of the rhythm that the offense had. They should have put up 50-plus points in this game. They should have put up 50-plus points in this game. However, here's a two-point conversion. Goff to, wow, what a catch in the back of the end zone. Incomplete, incomplete. People in Vegas are happy. People who bet the Niners at minus eight and a half are happy there, Shasky. Trey Lance, if I'm not mistaken, played four snaps today. It was right around that over-under, correct? Uh, he had yeah, two on that drive. Snaps. Yeah. Four snaps or five, like it's right two on that on over third under. Down, two on third yeah. down and forever just to set up a run. Didn't love right. that. I don't know if I want to see my prize possession, I, number three overall pick, just take a hit like a running back. If that's the case, have Jimmy Garoppolo out there and just run it. Yeah, I, here's my deal. And this is something we discussed all week long on the morning roast. Go with one quarterback. Go with one quarterback because after the throw to Trent Sherfield, every, everything else was predictable. The option, the the power run on third down. I, I it's just you're using them too much like Taysom Hill. That's it, it reminded me of Taysom Hill over and over and over again. And if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo and I'm finding a rhythm on that second possession after fumbling the first snap of the season, I am ticked off if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm saying, look, man, just let me get the flow. Especially after Jimmy hit Muhammad Sanu on that key third down there to keep the drive alive to score that touchdown where Trey Lance hit Trent Surfield. I'm not in love with this. I'm not yeah. in love with it. And I don't think we're going to see it a lot moving forward. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. And I just, man, I can't get over how much, much of a better person Jimmy Garoppolo is than, than the majority of people out there. He was celebrating Trey Lance throwing that touchdown early on, and it seems sincere and genuine. And I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm kind of blown away with the um, the teammate aspect for Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, I don't think we've given him enough credit for all the stuff that he's gone through. I know you have been in his back and in his corner the entire time for throughout his 49er tenure, but specifically these last six months, having taken all the punishment from the fan base that he did last year, people like myself criticizing him in every single term in terms of his decision-making or his play at quarterback, and then mm -hmm. flirting with all these different quarterbacks. They, they make a bold, bold trade to move up to number three he doesn't complain he doesn't cry he's the first one that texts Trey Lance he's the first one that's congratulating him on the sideline during exhibition games he doesn't complain when he comes out uh, of a drive um, like for example they went to all the way down to the to the one yard line he comes out here comes Trey Lance in and Jimmy doesn't snap off the helmet and throw it or throw his hands up or or anything he's just got a consummate pro and I know people always oh, highly paid yeah but you still got to act like a good teammate wow. and I think he deserves a lot of credit credit for that you know what this game isn't over it's 41 to 33 Lions have three timeouts left Niners just fall started on first down it's first and 15 at the 48 this is a horrific ending to the game I'm gonna just be honest with you here I this is not pleasing if you're Kyle Shanahan this is not pleasing if you're John Lynch this is not pleasing if you're wearing that 49ers jersey right now it's 41 to 33 it's second and 14 with a minute and one now the Lions are going to need a miracle but this is an awful ending to the football game I'm sorry you're up 41 to 17 you got to close the door in this team Lions Deacon Dunk you could call it stat pad you could call it all this stuff this is an awful ending to the football game awful well, this is what happens when you don't put up more points early on in the game and when you miss a field goal early on. I mean, the, you and I spoke about special teams being a problem for this team and Robbie Gold missing a, a, a basically not a chip shot. It was not a chip shot, but a makeable field goal. That one that right. one hurts. I mean, I could really use being up, you know, a couple of extra oh. points here and making it a two score <laughs> game instead of a one score game. And the Lions missed a field goal. Lions missed a field goal. I know. Remember that. They hooked one early. Yeah. I thought they the defense hooked one of, early. I thought the defensive linebackers played fantastic today. Uh, Fred Warner looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Greenlaw looked spectacular. Al Shair played a really, really, really good he, he game today. Good. I, I really liked what I saw from number 51. I did. I, I like what I saw from the linebackers here. Uh, about 40, 58 seconds left. Lions just burned their last time out. Uh, burned their last time out. And it is four, 58 seconds left, third and 11. Niners don't get the offside kick. Kittle fumbles that one. They don't tackle well in the open field on DeAndre Swift touchdown. Um, boy, boy, oh, boy. I, I, I just, I, I can't, like, I'm trying to be positive here, Shasky, and discuss Jimmy Garoppolo. But as we line the phone lines up, 888-957-9570, 888 957 I'm not, I'm not through with the, I can't get over the ending here. And the ending to this is like doom and gloom. You see, you see Greenlaw go out with a groin injury. You see Verrett go off the field and he got carted up to the locker room as the Niners pass on third down. Garoppolo to Debo, but Debo fumbles. Debo fumbles the football. Lions have the ball with 49 seconds left and a timeout. 49 seconds left and a timeout. Debo fumbles. He had the game ceiling first down Are you and serious? he fumbles the football. I am very serious here. Lions have the ball with 49 seconds left. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I mean, look, how you finish games is really going to – this is not good. This is not a good sequence that's going on right now. I feel like we jumped on the air a little prematurely here and not knowing that this thing was going to be a game. Um, I, I, I just can't believe the Niners should have 50 points right now. I mean, I, I just can't believe – what has been happening in this one? You got to strike while the iron's hot, and you got to stop a team when they're finished. And they have not been able to put their throat on someone. Uh, this this has just been an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare. What do you what do you want to talk about? Let's take a quick break here. Let the game end here. <laughs> I don't want to do play by play. Uh, I think we should take a quick break right now, watch the end of the game, and see what happens here. Come right back and line these phone lines up. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's line them up. Line them up, 888-957-9570. This game's going to be ending in about 30 seconds. Line them up, 888-957-9570. All right, let's take a quick break here. We'll be right back at the conclusion of the football game. About 47 seconds left. Lions got the ball uh, with a timeout left. We'll be right back. 
It's your boy, Bonte Hill from The Morning Roast. Be the first to react with us tomorrow morning.
Yeah, let's just go on the air now. This game is over. Well, it wasn't quite over. The Lions making a game. Debo fumbles. Unbelievable. Lions get it down inside the 30 yard line. But the Niners hold on and win 41 to 33. They're going to leave a lot of questions. A lot of questions after this one, but they do get the win. They start 1 0. That's right, 1 0. Jimmy Garoppolo wins a season opener here, folks. Wins a season opener. Niners starts his season 1 0. His second season opener, he's won as a 49ers hey, quarterback in a very, very good game. But boy, there's a lot of questions to be answered after hey. this. Hey, look, Liz, you have every right to be pissed off if you're a fan right now in terms of how that game ended. The final, what, eight minutes, you think? Seven, eight uh, minutes? Too loose yeah. for everybody's li- desire. Let's laugh a little. I mean, we thought this thing was done. We hop on. The next thing you know, craziness starts ensuing. Oh, my goodness. But look, this this shouldn't... Uh, look, at how this ended, we can dissect till we're blue in the face. And believe me, we will. I want to hear from you, the fans. 888-957-9570. How you feeling about Jimmy Garoppolo? How you feeling about this two-quarterback system that they tried to employ out there? I thought they left points on the board, and I thought that they opened up Trey Lance to getting squared up by linebackers and linemen on a few of these, like, run-specific plays. I just, I'm not liking it. I'm not like, let Jimmy be the guy if he's going to be under center. I'm kind of with you now, B. I mean, yeah, you got the cute touchdown out of it, and it looked really good, and maybe that boosted Trey's confidence in terms of as a passer. I just, man, for the life of me, I felt like they left a lot of their rhythm to be desired because they were trying to get a little too cute too soon for me. Um, would love to hear where the fans are at. Man, what about this Ibakam, man? What a great pickup this guy's been. He looked really good today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you know what? There's a lot of people who look good, but it all starts with the quarterback position. It all starts with Jimmy Garoppolo. And Jimmy Garoppolo was really good. This team is not going anywhere without a quarterback. All right? They're not going anywhere without yeah. a quarterback. I don't care how good this defense is. If you don't have a quarterback, you're not winning much. And Jimmy Garoppolo today, 17-25, to 25, 314 yards passing. Took the one sack, what? but he didn't throw a no-no throw. There was no Jimmy no throws, and he connected with Debo, of course, on a 79-yard touchdown to basically seal this game, although we saw there late in the end that the game was still in a balance. Jimmy Garoppolo was fabulous. After an offseason in which he got beat down by the fan base, beat down by, let's face it, Kyle Shanahan. I mean, Kyle Shanahan left this competition wide open in training camp. No matter what he says, no matter what he says about people being hard-headed or whatnot, Shanahan left this wide open, all right? Jimmy Garoppolo responded. He was tough. He stood in the pocket. I thought he delivered the ball timely. There was not too many. The ball placement today was phenomenal from Jimmy Garoppolo. There, there wasn't too many bad throws from him at all. So, again, Jimmy Garoppolo, it all starts with number 10. I want to hear what the fan base has to think about number 10 because, look, the two-quarterback system, what Shanahan started flirting with it during the Raiders game, I said, no, 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 no. Just go to Jimmy. Just go to Jimmy. Yeah, if you go I, to Jimmy, don't don't, don't play back and forth. So I want to hear from the Lions because you and I, Shasky, will have tomorrow morning to talk about this, Tuesday morning to talk about this, Wednesday morning to talk about this. So this show is for you, the listener. Yeah. Where are you guys at? 888-957-9570. Let's go to Nick and Berkeley to kick this party off. Nick, what's happening, man? You're on overtime with Shasky and Bonte. Hey, man, I, man, Jimmy G was making it rain today, man. When Jimmy G's on fire, Jimmy G makes it rain, man. His timing, <laughs> his poise, everything. And to get, like, just, you know, just dumped on all off season, and he's, 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 he's magnificent, man. And I'm telling you, man, I don't like the two the two quarterback system, and especially why are you having him run, like, on some inside trap or something like right. that. Right. You know, do a sweep or something. Yeah. I'm right, yeah. What, what don't you like about the two quarterback system, Nick? Uh, it just messes up. To me, it messes up the rhythm. It makes no sense. It's like it's just, it's just like it's like pitching your closer at the beginning of a baseball game. Hmm. Interesting concept. Yeah. Interesting. What else you got? Did you like the defense at all today? What else did you like from this football game other than Jimmy Garoppolo? He gone. All right, Nick's hey, Nick's B, gone. Let's l- let me let me let me punctuate what he's saying there. I, I didn't love Trey Lance coming in and, and strictly running the ball. It was like a third and twenty. 
and they were trying mm-hmm. to set up for a field goal, and I understand that. Just hand the ball off. Like, hand it off at that point. You're going to subject your prize possession to getting cracked in the middle of the field. I, I, I don't think that that's how you invest in bodies. I don't think it's how you invest in your quarterback. I just I didn't love it. I don't want to lose my mind over it. I just I didn't like it. I, I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was in rhythm, and I thought you took the team out of rhythm trying to get a little too cute. They should have scored 50 yeah. on Detroit today. Yeah. No, no doubt. Nine two five saying so tired of Shanahan getting cute instead of just burying yes, the opponents yes. when we get a decent decent lead. Five on those, not happy. All caps. Pathetic. Horrible. Not happy at all. Kurt Bad Napa, five seven four. Kurt Napa. Trey is going to be the person in the postseason, so let him start. Well, if you let him start, give him all the snaps. Like if Jimmy start, let him get all the snaps. Yeah. I, I don't I'm I, I don't want to see this back and forth. Hey, it's your turn to smile. How do you think Jimmy felt? When he gets when he hits Sanu uh, on third down, yes, he hits Sanu on third down for a nice throw. first down, Bonte, great, that was throw, a great throw, nice timing, yeah. nice timing, right on the money, had some zip on it, and the next play Trey's in the game, Trey's in the game, yeah. and he hits Shortfield. I don't think Jimmy, no matter what he says, because he is the total professional, total professional. I know he felt some type of way about that. I know he did. Yeah, well, I mean, I think every competitor would. He's a better man than I because I'll be real with you, B. I'm not sure that I would be all rah rah. I mean, believe me, I want to win, and it's all about team. But if you are a competitor at some level, you also think you're the right man for the job, and it's got to be frustrating that the coach goes out there and puts the kid in a position to throw for the first touchdown pass of the year. Man, right. that's again, Jimmy's a better professional and consummate uh, team guy than I am. <laughs> I admit I would have some some issues with that. But, gosh, it, it, he looked really good today. For him to throw for right. 300, and a lot of people talking about Debo Samuel today, and rightfully so. Debo looked fantastic. The fumble he at did. the end, not good. Not good. Yeah. But let's not have that one play take away from how spectacular he looked today. B, that Liz Frank injury, whatever happened with his foot last year that didn't allow him to work out in the offseason, mm-hmm. whatever weight you thought he put on or conditioning he didn't have, that was not the case today. He looked like wide receiver number one, and I found it interesting that Trent Sherfield got way more snaps yeah. than Brandon Ayuk. Cool. I mean, how many Boy. snaps did Ayuk get? Five? You, you, you know, it's it's pretty funny, and we'll get to that in a little bit later in the program, Shasky. Ayuk doesn't play much, and I just watch C.D. Lamb go crazy on Thursday Night Football, and people come down my road about Brandon Ayuk. I don't want to go there, but what's going on with Brandon Ayuk? I don't know. What's going on with Trey Sermon? I don't know. Young guys who are inactive, not getting a lot of snaps. What the heck is it, happening here? B, so I, 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 B, I don't, I don't know what's week? going on. This is a, this is a first round pick, Brandon Ayuk. Well, this later on this week, I, I see a lot of parallels between Shanahan and Don Nelson. You put guys in the doghouse, and they never are allowed to to get out of it. it that's not good. Like that is just not no. good. These are your hand selected top picks. It is now Dante Pettis, Joe Williams, uh, obviously Sermon and Brandon Ayuk. That's not good, man. Again, I'm not losing my mind, but it's not good. No, it's not good at all. Let's go to Andy in San Francisco. Andy, what's up, man? You're on overtime here on 95.7 The Game. Oh, well, happy opening day, guys. What's up? <laughs> yeah, uh, same to you. That was, that, was a, that was a squeaker, I'm not going to lie. But uh, I just want to bring up Aziz Alshire. He stepped up yes. more often than I would have expected today. You know, he, he did. Played really well on defense. He was all over the field, as far as I could tell. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you, Andy. He he was all over the field. You didn't see a lot of Fred Warner Jr. in this game. Uh, they were running the ball right up the gut, especially in the first half. The Detroit yeah. Lions, 17 carries, 88 yards. They were averaging 5.2 yards a pop. But you're right, Al Shair did step up there. Even though screenplay where DeAndre Swift broke it open really for that touchdown, play. he overran it a little yeah. bit. He got put himself out of the position, put himself out of position to make the play. But Shair made some great plays. Drake Greenlaw as well with the pick six. Drake Greenlaw is going to get paid yeah. one day this man could play football he could play the linebacker position yeah and and al shair i thought made a really nice play on the double misdirection play where detroit mm-hmm. had a wide open screen set up he stayed cut in front of the lineman made a great open field tackle niners were hitting today here's where i see an issue though Without Kinlaw out there, yeah. they were running right up the gut. They had the tight end coming over on that cross whammy on that slam run play, and they were doing what the Rams have done to the 49ers in terms of getting the ball on dives and slams mm-hmm. and whams right down the middle. 
I think mm -hmm. that that wide nine without Kinlaw, that's going to be something to monitor. The edges yeah. look good. Ibakam, I thought Ford looked good. I thought Bosa looked spectacular. It was great to see him look healthy. But in terms of Armstead, DJ Jones up the middle, I thought Kentavious Street had moments. But they got to stuff this gapping. Like, they've got to figure this thing out because some of these other teams are going to run the rock harder than the Detroit Lions did. I thought Detroit ran really well uh, right up that A and B gap. And the one thing people don't talk about in the 2019 season when it came to the Super Bowl run was that the Niners gave up 4.7 yards per carry. Mm -hmm. uh, we remember the Rams game when they ran it down their throats right down the field. We remember the Baltimore game, uh, the Baltimore Ravens game, when they ran it right down their throats, multiple drives, multiple possessions in that football game. The wide nine does expose you to some big running plays, but you got to have big hogs in the middle. Yeah. And when you're missing your big hog in Javon Kinlaw, that's a problem here. Hey, let's get back out to the phone lines. They're yes, jacked please. up right now. 888-957-9570. Let's go to Matthew and San Bruno. Matthew, what's happening? You're on You're on overtime here on 95.7 The Game. Hey, Bonte. Hey, Jackie. What's up, buddy? What's up, Matthew? Um, I thought the game was pretty was awesome. The defense was great, but, uh, but I just can't believe that they, they, they almost got their, this game flipped. They almost lost. But I and I also like the their offense. It was it was awesome. Hey, yeah, no doubt about it. It was awesome, Matthew. What about Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah, he was he was spectacular. He was. He looked really good. Bonte, didn't it look – I didn't know if this was the first 300-yard passing game since the New Orleans Saints game in the Dome yeah. on the road, November of 2019. Isn't that – I mean, yeah. it's kind of crazy. He looked great it, today. And Jonathan, great call. Love hearing from you, young man. Call throughout the week. Great Matthew, breakdown. Matthew, it, Matthew, Oh, yeah. Matthew, excuse <laughs> me. It was – honestly – I, look, the ending, we're going to we're gonna definitely notice the ending. But, Bonte, I don't think that should take away. Jimmy looks spectacular in this game. I thought he looked he did. really good. He did. You, you referenced the New Orleans game. I'll go back to Week 17 against Seattle in 2019, mm -hmm. where he was 18 for 22 for 285 in that football game. I thought he played very well in front of the 12th man up there in Seattle to win not only the division, but clinch home field uh, throughout the playoffs. Jimmy Garoppolo looked good. We've been waiting on this guy. Look, he looked good last year against the Patriots and the Rams. Mm -hmm. He was smooth today. Very, very smooth. Let's go to Dilly in San Leandro. Dilly, what's happening, man? You're on overtime here on 95.7 again. Hey, how's it going, guys? I, I really enjoyed the victory, except for the ending. We could have closed it out uh, a lot better. Uh, but I really want to talk about the injuries, specifically yeah. to our cornerback, Jason Verrett mm -hmm. and Raheem Mostert. It seems like the injury bug keeps getting us every year. Uh, what do you think Like, we could do about that? And should we come back with signing another cornerback, such as bringing back Richard Sherman? Look, I'm open to it, Bonte. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I probably was not open to it six weeks ago, six days ago, six hours ago, six minutes ago. And then I found out that Jason Verrett probably, hopefully doesn't, but it sounds like he thinks he has a torn ACL. It's devastating, and it's hard to find cornerbacks that are competent out there. You're not going to get an upgrade over Jason Verrett. I don't think that guy exists on the open market. But can you bring back somebody who can – you know, just play and be competent opposite Diamond or Lenore, who I thought looked pretty good today. Is it Richard Sherman? I, I'm open to it. I'm also right. open to trading a mid-round pick and something else yeah. uh, for for the kid from Jacksonville, Henderson, who CJ seems to be Henderson. on the block. block. Yeah, yeah, C.J. Henderson and, and Jacksonville got there. They got blown out today in Houston by a terrible Houston, Texas team. Jacksonville is going to have a long, long season. Urban Meyer, we'll see how long he lasts there. But it, that tweet I, that I sent out there, once Verrett went down, look, Josh Norman, you just signed him last week. He has to get up to speed <laughs> immediately. Like, he may have to suit up next week against Philadelphia. Yeah. But they're throwing out Zach Ertz. Dallas Goddard, yeah. Devontae Smith, Jalen Rieger. Philadelphia has weapons, and they have a quarterback who is mobile, mm -hmm. who can move around. That game ain't going to be easy, folks, out yeah. there in the city of brotherly love. I'm telling you right now. What, what? So Josh Norman, he's going to have to get up to speed, as well as the Richard Sherman. Where's he at mentally? Mm -hmm. Where's he at physically? Because I – look, I <laughs> – Sherman left a lot to be desired last season. He did. The way he, I thought, quit on the football team. He started talking about contracts and business and how it's going to be his last season. Well, now he's still at home chilling. He knows the system. He knows the scheme. 
How much does he have left? You may have to get desperate, folks, because Dante Johnson ain't the answer. Nah, and Detroit, right away, all game long, they didn't even really throw at De- De- uh, Diamador Lador like that. They looked at 38 said, okay, he's a competent quarterback. As soon as Dante Johnson got this game, yeah. Jerichoff said, oh, I know who that is. Yeah. That is barbecue chicken, <laughs> and I'm throwing the ball his direction yeah. all day long. So, cornerback, I don't care how good your pass runs is. You're going to need somebody to cover in this league. There is too many good wide receivers in this league to, to roll out Dante Johnson or Ombre Thomas out there. It's, it's situation 9-1-1. It's a cold red here yeah. at the quarterback spot for the Niners. There, there's no doubt it is. And, and, B, I think you also have to explore the Stephon Gilmore trade again, which Sterling yeah. behind the glass is texting us right now, and I agree with him. I was all over that trade last year. You know I wanted it. He's got one year mm-hmm. left on his deal this year. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. New England wants to, to keep him for now because they think that they're a, a, a player in the AFC East, but – I don't know what it would cost to get him, and he's making a lot of money. They don't have a lot of money left on the books right now. That seems unlikely, but I I wouldn't rule anything out right now. They need competent secondary play. There's no doubt about that. Let's continue with the phone lines here. Let's go to our main man down in Lamore in Central Cali. It's Dre. What's happening, Dre? You're on overtime here on 95.7 The Game. Butch, Fonte, thanks for having my call, guys. Hey, I didn't mind – Trey Lance getting that first TD pass. What I did mind was when on that 20 yard play, they didn't have him throw the ball. If you're going to put him in there, put him there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was really not happy with our pass rush. We had a big lead. I was expecting this, this you know, as, as strong as this pass rush looks on paper, I was expecting five, six sacks today. And it did not happen. I, uh, yeah. You know, Dre. I thought there were a lot of holds uncalled in this game, specifically on Nick Bosa. I'm not here to play the, oh, the refs were jobbing the Niners, but it did feel like Jared Goff was ready to get rid of the ball a lot because he knew that heat was coming. Well, well, that's the thing, Dre. He got the ball out quick, a lot of play-action pass. And think about this, Dre, real quick before I let you continue. Jared Goff in the first half, 15-20 for 92 yards. He averaged 4.6 yards wow. per pass. Wow. So, Jared Goff knew the pass rush was coming. He's got the ball out quick. True that. True that. And, hey, I had thought I wasn't playing. All I kept looking up was, did he get hurt or what? You guys say he was in there four or five times. Just like you said, he's a first-round draft choice. We need that guy. He's got the yeah. skills. I hope this ain't a doghouse thing. I hope you – know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hope the guy was hurting, but – Get Ayuk out there with him and Debo. We're, we're, we're stronger. It just, that makes no sense. But, hey, we got the W. Good go. Good go. And uh, let's beat the Eagles next week, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Dre. Anytime, Dre. Anytime. We got a comment here from Kyle yeah. Shanahan uh, about Jason Verrett. He's worried that he sustained a torn ACL. Uh, it's crushing. Uh, Hoping for the best. But uh, it is crushing. Crushing to see Jason Verrett, uh, who worked so hard, so hard to get back on the football field. And now Raheem Mostert as well. We'll see what's going on with him. But Mostert was out quick. He looked great on those first two toss sweeps. Uh, 20 yards, two carries. And as you know, he's out the game. He's out the game. So, uh, you know, the Jason Verrett injury is the one that I think. And a caller earlier this week, Shasky, was hilarious. Well, not funny that he suffered the injury. But a caller said, you know, the most important 49er may be Jason Verrett. And he may be right about that because we're going to see how the secondary responds to not having Jason Verrett. Well, look, they, it was a calculated risk. They knew that Jason Verrett was a guy that, you know, when healthy, looked good, but has been you know, injured a lot over the last couple of years. And that's a position that they haven't invested top picks in. Like, B, they really mm-hmm. haven't. I know Jaquaski Tart was a second rounder. That was like a prior regime ago. Jimmy Ward, right. a first rounder, a prior regime ago. All the other picks in the in in that area have been third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounders. Like, that's what this regime has done in the secondary. Mm-hmm. You pay for what you get. I mean, that's yeah. where they're at right now. And so it's a blow. It's a big-time blow. I would say this, like, <sighs> look, it's bad. But can you offset it with some more pressure from the up front? I did. Look, I know. I wanted more sacks today off Jared Goff. Yeah. He was getting rid of it. I thought Bosa was outstanding today. What'd you think? I thought D. I, I thought Bosa was good. I thought D. Fort was better. Yeah. I thought D. Fort had a more, I thought he had more impact on his football game. Yeah. I, I want to give number five five Evil credit Cam? because Ebu Cam looked good. But I, I want to focus on D. Fort. Yeah. Because he's another guy who's gotten dragged. 
dragged yeah, yeah. by this fan base. Uh, by the way, Matt Mayoka of NBC Sports Bay Area is reporting that the medical staff assure oh. Kyle Shanahan that Mostert's injury is not an ACL. Oh, thank it you. is not an ACL. So Mostert, me, at least is not a torn ACL. We'll see the severity of what's going on with this knee injury going into next week against Philadelphia. But I, I, I thought D Ford, and we were down there at training camp, Shasky, and we saw D Ford a couple times. We said, what's up? And then you walked up. It's like, D Ford, you got to get on the morning roast. You got to get on the roast. And D Ford said, let me get right, right first. Let me get right, right. And the guy took it seriously. Coming back, shedding these injuries, working out on the side. And I thought he put in great work today off the edge. He was beating double teams. He was good against the run. D Ford looked amazing today out there in Detroit. Let's go to the phone lines again. Triple eight nine five seven nine five seven zero. He looked really strong. He looked strong, he looked, and that was to yep. me a better sign because I know he's fast. He looks yep. strong. He did. He looked good. He beat a double team really well with a bull rush there. A lot of bull rushes from D Ford. Let's go out to Lori first in Phoenix. Then we'll get the Javier and Chambry in Arizona. Yeah. Lori, good afternoon. You're on overtime here with Shasky and Bonte. Well, that was uh, certainly a. A bit of a game there, huh? Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, so I really thought, you know, we started off kind of slow, and I thought, okay, what's going on? Maybe a little nerves, maybe a little, you know. And then they seemed to get rolling, and everything seemed fine. And then, boy, those last eight minutes were, were pretty bad. Um, I will say, and again, like I've been saying all along, um, I feel like this is Jimmy's team, and I felt that. I told you guys from the very beginning, as soon as we drafted Trey Lance, that, you know, Jimmy was the now, and Trey is the future, and I still think that's what they need to be doing. Now, getting Trey out there a little bit, you know, I, I'm not against that. I mean, I think that was good. Get the touchdown pass, getting him in, in, in good situations. But if Shanahan's going to do this, he needs to figure out what those good situations are, and he needs to make the most of those mm -hmm. particular downs. You can't waste it. You can't. You, know, you saw it today just by one missed field goal. And which is going to happen. I mean, Robbie Gold looked good today. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not upset with him at all. I was a little worried about him going in too, but he looked great. And yeah, I think Bosa did great. I think Ford looked great. I think our, you know, Elijah Mitchell, that was oh. fabulous. You know, yeah. I mean, just there were so many positives with our rookies today. Um, and you know, that great pass from Debo, and too bad he couldn't hang on the ball. And I think that you know, that last snap there, I think Debo and Kittle are both you know, like, hello, like you got, you, you can't afford a lot of mistakes. And I think no. these guys, I mean, hopefully this will be um, one. They can look at the film and go, okay, here's some, here's some problems. You know, this is good. At least we, we, we've identified some problems early right. and we need to fix it. But I am worried about Verrett and um, that, that secondary is, is just not, is not ready to go without him. So no. um, they're going to have to figure that out real quick and hopefully they can get somebody else in there. But otherwise, I mean, Offense looked great, and Jimmy looked great, and, you know, I'm pretty encouraged. Hopefully Mostert's just a, you know, minor thing. He'll be out a couple of weeks, and, and then hopefully mm -hmm. Trey Sermon. You know, hello, like, we're going to need him, too. Yeah. So, yeah, well, we, got, we got some work to do, but I'm encouraged by, you know, I'm encouraged by what we saw. Great call, Larry. Thanks, I'm sure Larry. we're going to hear from you tomorrow. Uh, great breakdown there on the 49ers. I also thought Mitch Wisnowski had some really good punts today. He did. Mitch Wisnowski worried a lot of 49er fans. He's been raked over the coals because he was a fourth-round pick. I thought Wisnowski played played pretty well today in Detroit. Here's She brought up uh, – Lori of Phoenix brought up Trey Sermon. And here's from Chris Biederman to the Sacramento Yeah, B. what happened? Kyle Shanahan says there's no injury for running back Trey Sermon. He just wasn't one of the top three running backs that they were going to use in week number one against the Detroit Lions. Now, that leaves me confused because Trey Sermon got a lot of reps with the ones, a lot of reps with the twos. And all of a sudden, he's not one of the top three available running backs. Now, Elijah Mitchell's special because DeShanahan's and Bobby Turner, the running back coach for the 49ers, they know how to find running backs. They will find running backs. We saw it in Denver. We saw it in Washington. We've seen it here in San Francisco. But all of a sudden, Trey Sermon is not one of your top three running backs. That's weird to me. That's well, really weird to me, Shasky. Well, and let's just look at a roster construction standpoint. The number one overall pick played a little bit, which is okay. I'm okay with that. It's a quarterback. Right. It's a long yeah. play. But then your second round pick, Aaron uh, Banks, isn't even ready to go. Like, he's not ready to go, okay? He's a guard out of Notre Dame, not ready to play. Right. Then your third round pick, the running back, doesn't suit up. And then last year's <laughs> first round pick has a bulky knee in the D tackle. And the other first round pick, Brandon Ayuk, zero catches, less than five snaps. What the hell is going on? Yeah, that's, that's wild. Now, we're talking about cornerback. Kyle Shanahan said he's been in contact with Richard Sherman. 
he remains a possibility. So Uncle Sherm, his phone line will oh, be man. regan uh, this week hey, him at and the Norman, Greenbrier, West Virginia. Him and Norman huh? will be absolutely hilarious. Oh. Real quick on the oh. running back situation. Eliza Mitchell, out of nowhere, jumping in front of Hasty. I didn't know what to expect. I was a little yeah. worried, to be honest with you. The kid looked amazing. Look, I take Look back. Good. It's one game, but I take back any ripping that I did of this. The vision, the patience, the ability to get to the outside right. effortlessly and then turn the turbo boosters on. Yeah. I thought he had toughness. I thought he had great one-cut vision. He got upfield quick. I could see why there's a lot to like with Elijah Mitchell. I actually think... He looked maybe the second, third best player on offense today outside of Jimmy Garoppolo. He looks phenomenal. He looks phenomenal. And I'm like, Jermichael Hasty's not getting burned. They're going straight to Elijah Mitchell. Couldn't like believe when, it. Before we knew about the Mostert injury, when we saw that Mitchell received the first carry in the game once Mostert went down, I thought, damn. Where's Hasty at? That's you're going to go with the Rook who didn't even know where to yeah. line up against the Raiders? Now you're going to the Rook. Hey, the Shanahan's. They will not let us know anything. We think we know what's happening in practice. We have no, no idea here. But Josh Norman, uh, speaking of Sherman and Josh Norman and the Verrett injury, uh, Shanahan said that Josh Norman was ready to go. He was ready to go. If he, if they wanted to, they could have played him. What, what but he doing? was inactive. So I don't know why he wasn't suited up then if he was ready to go. I I, I don't know what we're doing with this roster on game day. <laughs> I, I'm a little perplexed. And you know what? I'll Let's put it on pause. I want to write it down and put it on paper right. and get to it in a little bit. We'll bookmark it for now. Another right. thing I wanted to throw to you. Some of the play calling in the first half by the 49ers on offense. I love the Mostert tosses. They went back-to-back -to -back tosses. Yep. One to the left side, one to the right side. Then they run an unbelievable play action to get Jimmy Garoppolo the ball out in space and throw um, to, Trey, to, to uh, George Kittle. Throwing one to Kyle Juszczyk. I thought the way that they set up the run game and then layered it with some of the play action off of that was absolutely vintage Kyle Shanahan today. But it felt like to me, B, they got away from some of their bread and butter in the late third quarter, early fourth quarter, and they took their foot off the gas. You should have scored 50. Put this team away. Yeah, I'm with you there. Let's go to Javier and Vacaville. Our main man, Javier and Vacaville. You know it's football season yeah. when Javier is waiting on hold. We'll get to Chambry in Arizona in just a second. Javier, what's happening, man? You're on overtime. How you guys, How you guys doing? What's up, buddy? Not too bad, Hav. Hey, man, just two quick things, man. Like, let everybody here this real concrete and transparent. You know, don't be a prisoner of the moment. This team is young. The main stars in the team are young. We haven't all learned how to win. Everyone's just thanking us, like, you know, we're going to be out there, you know, running, going to be in, you know, first place to run to the NFC and blah, blah, blah. Hey, we're doing our thing. We're in a good spot. But don't forget, how many years has Kittle been in the league? Four or five? Mm -hmm. He wasn't a third year who missed just about – Every game last year with injury, maybe like paid six or so. My point is this. They had one good year in the Shanahan out of the four he's been there. We are in a good spot. The, the, the Verrett injury note, hey, shout out to my boy Verrett, 707 cap. I played four years of high school football against him. He's from Fairfield, so soon. But, hey, we got Josh Norman. You know, we, we still have a plethora of running backs. Elijah Mitchell was a six-round pick and was serving the Detroit Lions today. when We didn't even know what he was what he was in camp because he was hurt. Trey Sermon's inactive. Norman's inactive. Raheem Mostert gets hurt, and we don't skip a beat. Jermichael Hasty, inside zone runner, killing at the goal line with that, with his consistency, just in and out of his break, in and out of his cuts. I'm just more or less having everybody just take a chill pill, if lack of a better term, because we're going to be all right. I'm not saying we're going to go to the bowl, but we're in a great spot. Shanahan found a way. At the end of the day, we got the victory. We came away with the win. We won, and most importantly, we're going into week two with a victory. Black no, I agree with that. Hob, Hob. I agree I with do Hob. agree with that. But you cannot tell me you like the ending of that football game. No, I do not. But, again, look at this. Look, let's look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So, De Deontay Johnson in the game for Verrett. That was a, they, 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 they targeted him four out of the last six snaps of the game. I know. Deontay I know. is a reserve corner. That's Why is he out there? In there. Like, they, and they, hey, Hob, think about this one, Hob. They targeted Dante Johnson – more did they target it, Lenore, and he's fresh out of Oregon. Deontay Johnson is a special team backup corner. He's only in because of injury. He's a special teamer. That's why he's been where he's at in the league, and that's why he's been where he's been with the 49ers. But, again, Josh Norman can plug and play for Verrett. You still have Mosey coming back, who didn't play also mm -hmm. tonight. You have, or today, rather, you have Kawan Williams as your nickelback. You still have who? 
Jimmy Ward. You still have Jaquaski Tart. You still have a plethora of defensive linemen that can rush the passer. Yeah, they didn't get to the quarterback at the end, but hey, Jared Goff is still a serviceable and more yes, than I agree. capable quarterback. And yes, more, I agree. Like the Detroit yes. Lions have like no players. DeAndre Swift, yeah, you're right. Player. Hawkins is a player. Like, and we still we hey, win. Javier, Javier. What the heck was that Jaquaski Tart? Or excuse me, Jimmy Ward open Jimmy Ward. field tackle oh. on on DeAndre Swift or attempt at tackle? What the hell was that? I think he was playing for the next down, trying to make a business decision. But hey, it's, you know, in the day, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, hey, hey Hob, I'm not a Hob. Hob, let me say this, Hob. That's not cool Hobbs. when I you talk Hobbs. the way you talk in the off season. Jimmy Ward did a lot of talking this off season. You can't put that on film. I'm hey. sorry. Number one, I, I I agree with you because I don't even know why he wears number one. He hasn't earned that. My you know, the only one that's ever wore number one in in any honor, you know, estimation would be Jerry Rice or, or John Montana, and, and that that's never going to happen, obviously, because they're definitely way retired. I'm seeing. I don't know why he wear number one. He never wore that in college. But that's a you know that's a that's a me me thing, and I'm not in agreement agree with that as a player as a coach. But again, that's a Shanahan thing that he's letting fly. If he doesn't put up, they gonna let him go anyway. So like yeah, I, because yeah. they hey. have players that. they Good call, Hoff. Good call, Hoff. One thing that we haven't touched on here, and he, he hit on a lot there, we're going to focus on the secondary. I thought that the offensive line looked really, really good today. Jimmy Garoppolo on the deep ball to Debo, that was one of the few times he took a hit, and he had to stare, uh, you know, a, a guy literally going to be right in his face mask, and he throws one mm -hmm. down the field to Debo. I thought Debo made a mm -hmm. great adjustment to come back to the ball. It was underthrown. I actually think the underthrown deep ball on a play like that where the, the cornerback's back is completely turned, that was the right decision to target Debo pre-snap, and it was an isolated play. You had the safety way off to the to the middle of the field. I actually thought that was one of the few times where an underthrown ball is probably the best ball that you could throw in that circumstance. No now, you could say that was a Jimmy Duck. I'll listen to you. I'm not saying you're wrong. Right. But I thought Jimmy held in there, took a good hit, and delivered the ball down the field to a playmaker. That's all I want from Jimmy. Give right. Debo a chance to make a play yep. downfield. I'm okay with that throw. If it's I, a duck I or not, too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am too. Now we're nitpicking on whether or not it was right? a spiral or whatnot. You know what I look at it? I look throw. at a seventy nine yard touchdown. Yes. I look at a touchdown. That, that was like a touchdown. Rice. So to me, so to me, that's a great throw. Yes. You gave Debo a chance. Yes. The cornerback Jeff Akuda out of Ohio State, who's got bus factor all yeah. over him. Yeah, he does. Bus factor all over him. Back turn to the line of scrimmage. Jimmy says, you know what? Let me get this up there to give my receiver a chance to catch a football. You he got sandwiched on there. He got sandwiched on that play. Jimmy with a good throw. I'll take it all day. I don't care how many wobbles was on that Thank throw. You, all I know is Debo was celebrating in the end zone, rocking the football hey, like a baby. It was I, a 79 yard touchdown. Nick picked somewhere else. Not on overtime today. Please don't. Didn't you think Brunskill played a really good game today? And I know that Alex Mack had the fumble early on. That was a tough play. But it felt like, to me, the offensive line looked really good today, especially in the run game. I thought Trent look, Williams at the second level was just pancaking dudes. Look, in my notes, I didn't write down McGlinchey, Brunskill, <laughs> oh, Brunskill Mack, good. Tomlinson, or uh, Trent Williams. Whenever we don't talk about the offensive line, it's kind of yeah. like officials, right? When yeah. you don't bring up the officials, yeah. you know yeah. they did their jobs. The offensive line, whenever we don't bring them up, that's because they did their jobs. Look, we're going to take a quick timeout. Yes. Shambri in Arizona, stay on hold, 888-957-9570. This postgame show is about you, the fan. I want to listen to you, the fan. Forget us. We got we got all week to talk about this game. What do you think? What is your instant reaction to the 49ers going up to Detroit and winning 41 to 33? They're up 41 to 17 in this football game. What are your thoughts on this game? How did Jimmy look to you? Did you like the two quarterback system? What about Elijah Mitchell? What about this defense that's probably going to be without Jason Verrett, who looks like he tore his ACL? Triple eight nine five seven nine five seven zero. I want to hear from you, 49er fans. This is your show, Overtime with Joe Shasky the Butcher and Bonte Hill here on 95 7 the game. It's your boy, Bonte Hill from the Morning Roast. Be the first to react with us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. right here on 95 7 the game as we react to the 49ers Lions game. Everything from Shanahan to Jimmy G to Nick Bosa, and we're going to take your calls all show long. Again, be there or be square at 6 a.m. right here on 95 7 the game. Switching and saving with your local Geico agent sure is easy. As easy as tricking a dog by pretending to throw a tennis ball but then hiding it. Yes, he knows this trick. Every dog does but when he sees that ball it's so exciting his tail wags his mouth waters and so he runs to chase the ball you did not throw so yeah geico contact your local agent and see how easy savings can be
Running a business comes with pressure. Remote workforces, HR compliance, attaining top talent. You start to feel boxed in. Fortunately, there's Insperity. They put 30 plus years of HR service and technology to work, offering my employees competitive benefit options while lightening my HR load. Instead of obstacles, I'm surrounded by people empowered to be their best. With Insperity, nothing seems impossible. Insperity. HR that makes a difference. I hired a huge celebrity to promote my cluck sandwich with more sauce, bigger pickles, and 50% bigger filet. So you're just going to eat? Okay. My new $6.99 cluck sandwich combo. Only a Jack in the Box. Plus tax, limited time only. Price and participation may vary. Small drink and small fries. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K-A-R-S, cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. To learn more about our programs and to donate, visit us online at carsforkids.com. Remember, that's cars with a K. Pickup is quick and easy. You'll also get a vacation voucher and maximum tax deduction. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. What can give you a competitive edge in today's red hot housing market? Rocket can. That's because Rocket Mortgage can give you a verified approval. It could help your offer stand out. Rocket technology provides a rock solid verification of your income, assets, and credit, giving sellers greater confidence in you. Go to rocketmortgage.com or call us today at 8338 Rocket. Rocket. A verified approval is based on an underwriter's analysis of your individual financial information, appraisal, and title report. Call for cost information and conditions equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS Consumer Access.org number 33. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top rated Samsung? LG and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online. And it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at video only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into video only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Hey, Californians. Right now, in 29 counties... Voting centers are open early. Vote now. For the California gubernatorial recall election, all votes must be in by September 14th. Plan your vote. Find out if your voting center is open now at mybca.sos.ca.gov. That's mybca.sos.ca.gov. A message from the California Secretary of Progressive's Home and Auto Bundle Extrava Festa Saifathon. The annual year-long event for saving big on home and auto insurance. These savings are available up until and straight through Labor Day. Halloween. Clover Cleveland's birthday. Taco Tuesday. The anniversary of the moon landing. White Chocolate Day. The sale literally never ends. You can come on Jupiter's Ascension. National Pisces Day. But not Leap Day. <laughs> Just kidding. We're doing Leap Day because every day is perfect for saving money with a home and auto bundle only at Progressive. But for real, we're not doing White Chocolate Day because white chocolate is gross. Progressive Casualty Insurance company and affiliates discounts not available in most states or situations the moment you fire up a gator utv the engine has your full attention the completed job is on the horizon and the trail meets its match just like that you made short work of a long to-do list run with us on a john deere gator utv with effortless four-wheel drive at the flip of a switch and our smoothest shifting transmission yet nothing runs like a deer Search John Deere Gator for more. What makes AutoZone America's number one battery destination? Because they offer free battery testing and charging and reliable replacement batteries starting at just $79.99. And they've always got your battery solution. Get in the zone. AutoZone. I'm Amber Stott, host of Raising Kale, a podcast that tells the stories behind the food we eat. This week, my guest is Beth Lee. She shares recipes from a new cookbook based on essential Jewish baking. Download today on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The radio home of the Golden State Warriors. KGMC FM and HD1 San Francisco on Odyssey Station. 
Uh, Kyle actually asked the team, like, how do we feel about the win? And nobody said anything because at the end of the game, like, we just got to we just got to finish the game like we started. And then uh, I'm glad we got the win, though. Now back to overtime with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. That's Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel after the game basically said that the locker room was not thrilled with the way they finished today's game. Niners do improve or go start the season off 1-0. Uh, it's only been week one, but they win 41-33. They go to Philadelphia next week and take on the Eagles, who beat the Falcons today down in the Dirty Dirty in Atlanta. Uh, Debo Samuel with a monster game, nine catches, 189 yards. And Shasky, Cal Match at just Texas. You can check out Cal Match alongside Coles. And I know Coles, Jim Colesmore, is going to have plenty of thoughts as Cal tries to check Jim Colesmore. Cal Match at just Texas. Round two pick, inactive. Round three pick, That's... inactive. Round three pick, booty cheeks. Now, I'm not going to go there yet about that one, uh, <laughs> but that's not good. That's not good in well, last year's first round yeah, pick. That's first, bo- both of them, Javon Kinlaw, the injury, didn't play today, and Brandon Ayuk. What in the world is going on with number 11, Brandon Ayuk? I mean, I had Niner fans jumping down my throat on Twitter telling me that Ayuk is so much better than deep than CD Lamb. He's a better fitness offense. He's got the numbers to back it up. He's going to be a better pro. I don't like the fact that I hear I see a tweet from Mayoko saying that they're down on him. He's been trending down towards the end of training camp. He's not picking up the playbook. What is going on with Brandon Ayuk, Shasky? I, I don't know. And my question to Mayo, Mayoko, and again, I'm not trying to criticize. I'm just like, where was this intel like a week ago? <laughs> where was it? Where was it three or four days ago? I mean, it would have been nice to have known that. Uh, Trent Shurfield. Um, man, I think that this guy's going to end up being the guy opposite Debo Samuel. Yeah. I told you during the week wow. that I thought I thought he'd be the three. I didn't know he'd be the two. So that mm-hmm. is not like I'm sitting here and saying, oh, I predicted it. I'm saying I knew he was important. Oh, my God, he's way more important than I thought. And then at the end of the game, at least in the second half, it looked like Mohamed Sanu was returning punts. And I was like, wait a minute, I, you can't even return punts now? I don't know what the hell's going on. And my bigger issue, uh, again, like – this year's draft, I'm willing to be patient. It's not good, right. but I'm willing to right. be patient. Like, I'm willing to be patient. It's last year's draft I'm looking at when you were supposed to have two first-rounders, and I'm saying, well, my D-tackle wasn't in there, and they were running the ball mm-hmm. right down our throats. And then my all-world you know, wide receiver, at least who I thought was an ascending all-world uh, wide receiver, now he's not available. It's not good, B. Like, it, it's no, just not. it's not good. But it shouldn't overshadow how good Jimmy Garoppolo looked today. And I know the finish right. is something that we're all going to be right. obsessed with, right. myself including. And I'm going to be pissed and left with a bad taste in my mouth. But the beginning of the meal was delicious. And Jimmy Garoppolo was an excellent steak today. No, it was. You're absolutely spot on. Debo looked healthy. All right, nine catches, 189 yards, and a touchdown. He looked explosive, especially when he got the ball in his hands. Jimmy Garoppolo was precise. I thought his decision-making was Mm -hmm. on point. And I thought the play-action pass, the way he held out the fakes in the run game, that was pro. That was Tom Brady-ass, Peyton Manning. guys. I'm not saying he's those type of quarterbacks. But but the way he carried out the fake on the play-action pass, Detroit was biting all over the football field. There's no doubt about that. Let's get back out to the lines, though, because this show is about the callers. It's about the 49er fans. 888-957-9570. What's your big takeaway from this football game up in Detroit? I want to hear from you, Niner fans. Let's go down to Arizona to our main man, Shambri, down in AZ. What's up, Shambri? You're on overtime. Hey, what's up, fellas? Appreciate you taking the call. Man, I mean, I'll take the win, just like most of the fans said. Not too happy, and it ain't no reaction. Um, I had three mainly standout uh, points for me. Uh, offensive line, obviously, played their asses off. Yeah. I mean, for about 90, yep. 95% of the time. I mean, just the pass protection, the holes they were opening mm-hmm. up. Obviously, the roof looked good. Um I'll tell you, for me, Al Shair bought his ass out. I mean, when, mm-hmm. when the roster cuts came, I really liked, you know, the the other rookie, 53, Griffith. Um, I thought we should have kept him because he balled out preseason and should have probably got rid of Al Shair. Man, was I wrong on that one? Dude played his ass off. Uh, but number one takeaway, man, I'm just so damn sick and tired of Armstead. You oh. put him on the outside, I see the quarterbacks or the running backs 
get to his edge because he ain't holding containment. You move him inside, then I see a big ass run by Swift down the middle. I mean, dude, you got to do something for the amount of money you're paying. If you ain't going to be putting up the numbers on the stats, at least eat some damn double teams or something and let somebody else eat. But, you know, y'all brought up not having the cap space for Gilmore. I mean, there's a cap space right there. Trade so, his ass and get Gilmore. That, open up some cap space point. right there. No, no. no I, You're look, on I fire, Shambry. I want to lead You're this brigade fire. here. Look, I want to lead this brigade here, B. Yeah. Eric Armstead is a positionless defensive lineman who is just a wow. big blob. Like, what is he? Is he a D tackle? Is he an end? He ain't fast enough to be an end. Okay. Oh, he had a great year because they had Buckner and they had Bosa and they had D Ford. You don't pay the fourth best player on a defensive line top five money at that position because that's what he got paid. Uh, his yep. annual was 17.5, and that's not what he's making for this particular year. But you get where I'm going at that. I, right. To me, he's the logical. Like, if you had to move somebody to go get yourself a corner or to get yourself some draft capital, yeah, he's the guy I'm moving without a question. You tell me who's more important right now. Forget it. 33 percent of D Ford snaps or 100 percent of Eric Armstead snaps yeah no nah, you're absolutely right and I'd rather have Shambri, D Ford. great call yeah hey Shambri, great phone call great phone call you're on absolute f- fire with that because I, he brought a Carabar Eric Armstead I didn't hear Eric Armstead's name once on the broadcast I was just like oh wait did he play today like seriously and I don't mean to harp on Eric Armstead no, I don't want to be is that guy is. but but it is what it is, Shasky. He's number 91. He's got exactly. C on his jersey. He's a captain on the football team. He got the money Buckner deserved. He got Buckner's money. All right? He got Buckner's money. All right, I'm going to get a little fired up here about Eric Armstead. I, it's the first time I heard Eric Armstead's name in seven hours. B. I swear to God. B. I didn't hear Shabri. Great point there with Eric Armstead. And now my mind, and you're leading the brigade, Shasky. Well, can I ride shotgun? Can yeah. I ride shotgun? I'm willing to hear any talks about Armstead getting traded for a quarter like Stephon Gilmore. I'm willing to hear any talks about Eric Armstead getting traded for a guy like C.J. Henderson. I don't even know what C.J. Henderson is at this point, the Damn. young man out of Florida. But I'm willing to take a chance to relieve some money because Eric Armstead was MIA today. Well, look, he, he's making about $12.5 million. That's what his cap hit is right now, a dead right. cap hit of $28 million. He is 6.5% of the salary cap. That is the second highest percentage of the salary cap hit outside of Jimmy Garoppolo on the 49ers Mm -hmm. right now. All right? Mm -hmm. Does he look, if we were to rank all the best players on defense in terms of importance and moving forward, I mean, is he even in your top five? I mean, I'm being (laughs) real. I'm asking out loud, sincerely. I'm going to go Warner Bosa, and you can pick the order on that one. I'm going to throw Greenlaw in there. I got Greenlaw in an outstanding game. Al Shire played fantastic, but I wouldn't put him there yet. I don't think he's anywhere near there. But I would say that D Ford is more valuable than Eric Armstead. I just question what he does. He doesn't stuff the run. He doesn't eat up double teams like Justin Smith or Bryant Young did back in the day. And he definitely doesn't get it to quarterback. If anything, he is barbecued (laughs) chicken on the naked bootleg where they leave him as the free edge They do it every time. He collapses in, and he's too slow to close out. Look, Armstead is dead weight, dude. The reality is what it is. He looks great in pads. He plays like Jane on game day. Wow. Wow. And you know what? I wish I could say I could disagree with you. I don't want to be that guy to be all doom and gloom after a 49ers win. But you're spot on there. It is unacceptable to wear that C on your jersey, to get that money that you got. And I don't hear your name against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions, and let me tell you folks something. I was taking a peek at the Eagles game at times, especially when the Niners game was getting out of hand. Then we had to switch back because the Lions had a chance to tie it. The Eagles offensive line is no joke, all right? They're not – you can't just walk into Philadelphia and say, hey, we're going to punk you. They're going to fight back. So, Eric Armstead, you're on notice, man. I I swear to God, you're spot on. You and Shambry are spot on there. Let's get back out to the lines because I want my blood pressure to lower a little bit when I think about Eric Armstead. He's a trigger point for me right now, Shasky. Let's go to Fairfield. Big talk T. Big talk T out there at Fairfield. What's happening? Yard overtime. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it's talk big T. Uh, Talk big T from Fairfield. Um, Talk big T. My bad, man. My bad. Yeah, no. It's all good. I got locked in with y'all late last season, so I kind of want to get started early. Um, Yeah, man, totally took my thunder with Eric Armstead. There's nothing else I can say about him. I mean, he's just a guy. He's just Uh, a guy. So he's definitely expendable. Um, Just think about what you just said there. Hold on. Big Pup, think about what you just said there. He's just a guy. 
He's just a guy. They pay him to not just be a guy. I just say, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> That's, it's just unacceptable, man. Oh, my god! What else you got? Because my, my, my whole take was going to be, well, you know who named I didn't hear, which is good, which is M- McGlinchey in the old line. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yep. Yes. But also, on the flip side, the name I didn't hear was Eric Ormstead, but I digress. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. The, um, now. I'm going to be a little patient with this guy, and I'm talking about Ambry Thomas. Now, as a corner, I'm not really encouraged too much, but I'm going to hold off. But what I'm going to tell you for sure, as a kick returner, get him out of there, please. (laughs) He don't want to do that. He don't want to do that. He's going to cost us a game. He's going to fumble. He's he's a problem back there, and that's why I don't understand why we got rid of Simba. I mean, at this point, bring back Richie, Richie James to return some kicks, man. This guy, he can't even get to the 25, man. You might as well just down the ball and get to the 25. He's getting to the 20. So he's a problem. He's definitely a problem. And um, as far as Ayuk, I liked him last year, but maybe maybe he's getting a little full of himself. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But like you say, it would have been nice to know that. This stuff kind of came out of the blue. And, uh, yeah. you know, Shanahan, he – he really don't care when it comes to his doghouse, man. It's kind of, it, it, it's bad. Yeah, yeah but man, see, I hope I'll, this dude. I'm with you. I'm with you on this one. The, the Simba thing, that roster, I don't. That made no sense to me. The Ayuk thing to me is alarming. No, it, it's alarm. If this is truly an issue, it's alarming because now there's a pattern that's in place. You draft mm-hmm. the guy that's your guy on your side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And you can't get on the same page with him? Is it the not is it the personality? Are we not getting along in the classroom? Is the person not putting in the work? What was the backstory on, on the person's hard work and what they're putting in behind the scenes when you're not there in the facility? Is it you don't like their attitude? Like what exactly is it? Because I can't see the same thing happening with Andy Reid. I don't see this happening with Sean Payton. I don't see no. this happening with some of the other great offensive mind uh play callers. They are enabling and empowering. They're yeah. young playmakers. That's what they do. I do not no, understand right. this. I'm going to give guys tough love. Maybe Shanahan needs to look in the mirror here because this isn't the first wide receiver. B, this is like the fourth Dante position Pettis. player on offense. Yeah. Pettis, Ayuk, right. Joe Williams, yep. who just quit on them. And then uh-huh. obviously now you've got this guy uh, and, and Trey Sermon. Something's going on here, and I, I, I don't think it's just the players. And, and the problem here with Brett and Ayuk is, look – we can't avoid it. That receiver class was rich with rich Loaded. With talent. Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, Michael Pittman Jr., Jalen Rieger, who we'll see next week in Philadelphia. We'll see what Henry Ruggs does tomorrow night on Monday Night Football. This class, that receiver class was one of the best we've seen in a very long time. Since maybe 2014 with Mike Evans yes. and all those guys. Like, you can't whiff on a pick like this. And uh, not only that, you're a good team that got two first-round picks. Yeah. Two. One of them doesn't play because his knee blew up. You knew he had knee to the night. It's going into the draft process in the first place. And then you take Brendan Ayuk. I want to be all positive here. The Niners do win, but that's something to monitor as the week progresses forward. Yeah, no, it, it is it's okay worrying. to be worried. It, yeah, no, there, there's no doubt about B, it, Chasky. No B, doubt. B, you, you all of a sudden, like, you're, you're hyping this dude up all offseason – and then he doesn't even get snaps as a wide receiver. Like, honest to God, I kept looking out there. I go, okay, I see Sanu number six. He switched jersey numbers. I see a right. ton of Sherfield. Like, I get it. That makes sense. You can't find a couple of plays for Ayuk? For number 11. going on here. Now, I will say this, too. Ayuk didn't look good in the preseason. No, I He agree. dropped a lot of passes I in the agree. preseason. A lot of passes. Had the hamstring injury for a second. Maybe he's been slow to recover. I have no idea what's going on with Brendan Ayuk here. Let's get back out yeah. to the lines. 888 I see your messages on Twitch. We really appreciate it. Yeah. You guys are on fire on Twitch right now. And a text line as well. Let's go out there. Robin San Bruno. Robin San Bruno. Yard overtime, man. How you doing, Rob? I'm doing fine. So, first off, y'all know y'all my guys, but lay off my guy, Eric, man. <laughs> I mean, he, he doing what he do, man. I, I, I'm not – I don't expect top nine sacks. I, I feel he had a few pressures today. He made a few plays, but we got we to gotta look at the real issue. And let me start with this. Bosa got a few got clamped up by the rookie. That rookie, he, he going to be special. But, look, I didn't like the way Trey Lance was being used. I don't know what that totally. was about. You trying to get Trey Lance hurt? He's a quarterback. Yeah. He's not a, a specialized player. He's not a gimmick. He's a quarterback. That learned the place from the pocket since he was in elementary school. Why the hell are you running these read options? 
If let Jimmy be the quarterback. If you don't let let Trey sit, let Trey sit. Don't bring Trey in there, and then you trying to you trying to ruin him. And then Ayuk, Ayuk is a playmaker. We seen it last year with Mullen. Why can't you get nothing out of the guy? I didn't see him all game. What the hell is going on? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to. I, I don't. I, I don't want to see. I like Sheriff Hill, but I don't want to see him. Ayuk is our first overall pick. We need to make some. The guy has. He has talent. Now, the last year you said about the draft about the receivers here. Those guys. Those guys are great, but he's good as well. He showed he can play the game. I don't understand. Yeah. Kyle, I don't understand Kyle. Kyle right now. He can look himself in the mirror and then Moster. My God, You're, <laughs> it's the reason why you was a special team your whole career. He can't stay on yeah. the field. Like he get a little hurt. Right. He three carries and you gone. Like, what the hell is going on? And then Trey Sermon. You don't draft a guy that high and then, and then sit him a, a healthy scratch and put the fifth-round pick in. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Rob's cutting out. I Rob was on it. fire. He, I, he was about to list the whole hey, roster, and I hey. can't blame him. Look, this, there's a standard. And you know what I'm, what I'm realizing here and I'm reminded of? I'm reminded of this. Yes, the Niners won. Yes, they won 41-33. to Yes, the offense looked good. But the finish to the game <laughs> yes. and the uses of some of the personnel, there's a standard here in San Francisco. We're not the Detroit Lions, folks. We're yeah. not the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey. We're not the Houston Texans. There's a standard here. And when you make these high draft picks and you're saying, you know what, Trey Sermon's not one of our top three running backs right now. What? He's a second-round pick. What is going on in the scouting department then if this guy ain't one of your top three running backs? Then he should be on the P squad then. He should be on the game day roster. Yeah. He should be on the practice squad, Shasky. Brandon Ayuk, he did have a good rookie season. He really did. He showed a lot of promise. He looked like the best drafted wide receiver since Terrell Owens last season. And he can't play today? And, and, and I, I just, I don't get it. Well, B, and it's Shanahan ahead kid. Well, B, this is what happened to Dante Pettis. He showed some promise in his rookie year. And then from year one to year two, something happened. And the next thing you know, he's in the doghouse. Like, I don't know. Is it the player? Is it personnel? Is it, is it the background checks? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is it an injury? But here's another thing. Right. On Trey Lance, if I took the touchdown, because the touchdown was a really nice play. But it, it it's maybe maybe it dilutes everything that happened today. But if I took that out, I thought the Trey Lance packages were a nightmare. I thought they were an absolute nightmare. And, yes, you are going to get the young man hurt. Keep Jimmy in there. What are you doing? Jimmy was in rhythm. I thought every time you went to go plug in Trey Lance, they lost a little momentum. They lost a little steam. And to me, I just thought it did no good to the entirety yeah. of the team. Forget the individual Trey Lance. The totality of the team. This is what, It's about winning. It's about winning a division and trying to give yourself yep. the best chance to win the Super Bowl. Right. When Trey's out there and you're running this predictable read option, Option play, you're going to get him hurt, and it's not helping the offensive flow whatsoever. I hated it today. Look, I, 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 I could not stand it. This is why during the week we talked about it. From an entertainment standpoint, sure, it was thrilling. Like, ooh, the rookie quarterback, he's in for a snap in the first quarter. But Shasky, we discussed this, and I said, look, if you're going to go to Jimmy, let Jimmy run the play. Like, you take Jimmy out after a third down dime to Muhammad Sanu. <sighs> Okay, you scored a touchdown on the next play. But the arrogance to let Trey yeah. Lance throw in that situation. And then later on in the game, you're using him for a run a speed option. What do you think? You're Tom Osborne and you're the Nebraska court husker, <laughs> court huskers, and you got Tommy Frazier out here running a speed option. What are we doing out here with the Trey Lance plays? Those were wasted snaps. And yes. you're gonna get somebody hurt yes. by employing that. You. Let Jimmy cook. If Jimmy's cooking and he's in the rhythm. Go with Jimmy. He's a veteran. Let him cook. And I guarantee you, Jimmy didn't like it. Let's go back out to the lines yeah, here. Good call, because, again, B. it's not good about call. us. It's about the listeners here. It's about the listeners. It's about you and the lines right now are jacked up. DJ, Mustafa, Robin, Connor, hold on tight. Let's go to Mitch in New Jersey. Mitch in New Jersey. You know it's football season when we hear from Mitch. Mitch, you're on overtime here on 95.7 The Game. How you doing, guys? Thanks for taking my call. You know, I was wondering. No problem, Mitch. You're going to dream yeah, you're going to draft four guys, four deep to the line with four years in a row. I expect you to keep them. They try. Maybe they didn't try hard enough. But um, at least in, at least in uh, Bosa, yeah, he's good. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. Two things. Aliha, Aliha Mitchell, uh, That this looks like a gem. And hopefully the other guys, uh, most of them uh, hurt badly. And um, how come the kid only got uh, five targets? Yeah, I don't know. He's one of the best tight ends. Thanks a lot. Well, Debo was cooking. Debo was cooking, Mitch, and we thank you for the fall call. Debo was cooking, uh, and I like the game plan today. Detroit probably had George Kittle bracketed, all right? He's yes, your he best weapon offensively. Yeah. 
every team in the league is saying, where's number 85 at? Let's circle him and make sure he doesn't go off. Well, you know what happened? Debo saw a lot of one-on-one, and Debo took advantage of a lot of one-on-one. I have no problem with the targets with George Kittle because of the yeah. way the passing game flow today. But Mostert, Mostert keeps coming up here. It's Shasky, the discussions we've had we've, all offseason. We've said it. I'm always begging for a bell cow. Give me a bell cow, a guy who I know is going to carry the ball 20 to 25 times because I don't trust Mostert to be able to handle a big-time workload. Can Mostert get 200 carries? I have no idea. Can you give me 15 carries today? You asked me before the game. How many carries Mostert's going to get? I'm like, he's going to get 20. He has to. He's got to carry the load. I thought it was going to be a big Raheem Mostert day. The fact that he only got two carries and came up with a knee injury, that, I mean, I can't count on a guy to stay healthy for 17 games, Shaska. I really can't. 17 games? I mean, can, can we get seven straight quarters of health? Like, uh, honest to God, and, and it feels unfair to say because the guy was awesome in those playoff runs in 2019. B, Elijah Mitchell ran really well today. I mean, he ran really well today. I don't know what the hell went into that thinking, but that worked, and I'll give him credit for that. Like, you get credit when you do something right. like that. You went to Elijah yeah. Mitchell. He switches from number 49 to number 25, and he looked fantastic. He actually, I mean, the burst and the physicality, yeah. the vision, the patience yep. with the one cut, I loved what I saw from him. On the flip side, Raheem Mostert, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I it, it's really stinks. It stinks right now because they're very thin to begin with, and there's only so many guys that you can suit up. And when I know I suit you up and you leave that game almost immediately, boy, that's a blow. That's a no, blow. Huge. You know, and huge. there's other guys on this team. Like you had Will, uh, Willie Gallman. I'm not saying I love the guy, but, yeah. I mean, you look back in hindsight and you say, damn. Maybe we should have kept a couple more running backs. <laughs> no doubt about that. Let's go out to Mustafa in Fremont. Mustafa, what's happening? What's going on, guys? I'm finally able to breathe and calm down because that had me on pins and needles. We had this game. It was a blowout. If it wasn't for the two big plays, that pick six by Greenlaw and that 80-yard touchdown run by Debo, we could be looking at a loss after a potential blowout. So, it really concerns me that our defense is just kind of, you know, our DBs, especially now come, you know, getting word that um, Jason Brett might be out for the season with an ACL tear. So I'm a little nervous right now, guys. The win is a win, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. No, good call, Mustafa here. Shatsky, let's take a quick break here. Yes, sir. We're going to get to the rest of the callers on hold. Sid, Connor, Robin, if you're on hold, stay on hold. We'll get to you on the other side here on overtime. Don't forget, after we sign off, don't go anywhere. We are your home for 49ers post-game coverage here at 95-7 the game. Kyle Matson, Jim Colesmore. You think we brought the heat. Coles and Kyle will bring it up to another level here on 95-7 the game. They're coming up at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, excuse me. Don't forget to elevate your tailgate with Charles Woodson's Intercept Wines. Look for it at your local retailer or visit interceptwines.com and have it delivered to your door right now. That's Charles Woodson's wine, Intercept Wines, the former Heisman Trophy winner and now Pro Football Hall of Famer. More coming up here on Overtime. Your calls, 888-957-9570. It's Joe Shasky, the butcher. It's Ponte Hill here on Overtime on 95.7 The Game. What a win for the Niners. Yes. Football is back in the bay, and it feels so good. Ah! Keep it locked. Hell yeah. On 95.7, the game. Curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online, and it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at Video Only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into Video Only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Advertisement by Zimmerman Reed of 2381 Rosecrans Avenue, Suite 328, Manhattan Beach, California, 90245. Consent is not a condition of purchasing goods or services. Attention all rideshare and food delivery drivers. If you're a current or former rideshare driver, listen closely, as you may be entitled to see...
receiving end of Trey Lance's first career NFL touchdown pass. I mean, I had no idea uh, when or if I was going to play. Um, obviously, I was hoping that I would get, you know, get to get on the field and, and just help. But at the same time, uh, my role is just to be ready whenever my name is called. Now back to overtime with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. First touchdown of the season for the 49ers, Trey Lance to Trent Sherfield. Uh, Trent Sherfield looks like a good find here from the Arizona Cardinals. Trey Lance, a nice little touchdown pass to Sherfield. And you heard from Lance after the game saying, I'm not sure when my number is going to get called. Heck, we're with you, Trey. We don't know when your number is going to get called. <laughs> but he had a nice little debut with the passing game, the one pass he did throw running the ball. There's just nothing there for him as we talk about the two quarterback system. Don't forget Kyle Batson and Jim Colesmore coming up at the top of the hour. We'll take your calls in just a second here. But Trey Lance, the debut. What did you did that meet your expectations, Shasky? What we saw from Trey Lance today? Um, no, I actually thought it did a disservice to him, the individual, the team uh, as a whole, and um, I, I just I understand why you would do it, and, and maybe this is part of the work in progress. Maybe I'm a little too mm-hmm. overcritical or expecting too much. I didn't. If, if you're not going to play him and utilize him as a passer, to me. I don't want to expose him to getting hit in between the tackles the way they did. Uh, you could right. say, oh, you got to showcase something because you want to you know, hide it for later on down the line. You want to just put some stuff on on tape. For what? For who? I mean, this is the number three overall <laughs> pick. This is the guy that you're hoping is going to be the franchise of your team. This isn't some gimmick player. This isn't Devin Hester who's getting a couple right. of you know snaps because he's a special team superstar, but you're trying to get him some touches on offense. This is a guy you're hoping can drop back and – and win games from the pocket in year two, three, four, five, six. So to me, it made no sense whatsoever. It was a nice touchdown pass. I think Shanahan feels better about that than I do, to be totally honest with you. I'm like the biggest Trey Lance fan. And I was like, man, I didn't really like that whole sequence. I would have just allowed Jimmy Garoppolo to do that. And Jimmy's such a better teammate than I, him celebrating the whole thing. It was um right. I I, I just Today isn't about Trey. To me, today was about Jimmy Garoppolo and some of the Mm -hmm. injuries. And I just felt really good for Jimmy Garoppolo because, man, I've been critical of him. And he looked great. I mean, B, he looked great. He did look great today. 17 of 25, 314 yards. And let's be honest, his last completion to Debo Samuel should have been a game-sealing first down. Totally. Debo Samuel fumbled the football there. Look, 12.4 yards per attempt. Although there was a lot of... A lot of check downs there, but I did think Jimmy Garoppolo, the intermediate stuff, the 10 to 15 yard The deep pass throw plays, over the middle? The, absolutely. He, it was a lot of those. A yeah. couple of the Trent Sherfield, a couple mm-hmm. of Debo Samuel. He found George Kittle on a couple, allowed his receivers to run after the catch. So I thought Jimmy Garoppolo played really well. Uh, this was by far the best season opener he's had for the 49ers. So we'll talk a lot about that this mm-hmm. week. No doubt about that. Let's go back out to the lines. 888-957-9570. Let's go to Robin in the city. Robin, what's happening? You're on overtime. So hi, you guys. Um, I'm so glad that you gave Jimmy G his prop. But let's just face it, that touchdown that Trey threw was all set up by Jimmy G. Yes. Yeah, I didn't yep. um, understand why it was. So, you know, I'm not going to high praise the guy. Um, I, I continue to uh, – I look forward to when he does start. I don't understand why Kyle Shanahan had him switch in and out and got him possibly hurt. But my biggest takeaway from this game is um, – I, I, I don't want to get too overly, you know, scared or whatever because – but that offensive – I mean, that, that the, um, the there was no pass rush. I mean, you know, somebody said Bosa looks slow, but he's coming off an injury. I want to get you guys' right. opinion on Bosa. I thought he applied pressure. Uh, what about Trent Williams? I mean, he, he, he didn't seem to be effective. That pass rush really, really, really – it has got to get better. And then the other thing about the secondary, Barrett can't even stay on the field. This guy, he, nobody even hit him on that play for him to get hurt. When will the 49ers start investing in this secondary? And what do you yeah. guys think? Who should they go get? And the last thing I want to say to you guys, I'm going on that same trip that Bay Rock mentioned. I'm going to New York City with my brother, Shasky. He wanted me to let you know. Nice. I'm going with my brother, nice. Rich. We're going to New York City, and then we're going over to Philadelphia um, on that Saturday morning. That's awesome. And then to watch the game Sunday. And we better beat Philly, you guys. You be- mm-hmm. we got to beat them. Sp- 
especially if yeah. we're going to be yeah. there in their stadium because they talk too much trash. Yeah, no guys? doubt. Good call, Robin. Thanks, Robin. You know, B, yep, I, I want to get call. on Bosa real quick. Um, I thought Bosa was really good in this game. I, you could tell, though, he was not conditioned because I felt like in that second half when the defense was out there for quite he some got time, he, he was exhausted. I also thought he got held a lot. They could have thrown a lot more holds than they did in this game. But they're going to have to find some pass rushers outside of Bosa, specifically when he's on the sidelines. I thought even Keith well, Ford brought it. Well, of course, brought it. I, I wouldn't get D Ford as proper's. Too. Yeah, no, he is. He is, and that's how you want it with D. Ford. D. Ford brought it today. I thought D. Ford was, no, he was really great. good. I thought he was actually the 49ers' best pass rusher. Yes. He beat double teams. He came off the edge. He really punked the Lions back up right tackle. He took advantage of him. Uh, Bosa was going up against their first-round pick, uh, Pene Sewell, who was going to be a stud. He will be a really good player in this league for a long, long time. Nick Bosa did a lot of good, but I believe the Lions, you mentioned Bosa getting gas maybe in the second half of the game. The Lions, I believe, ran 81 offensive snaps. I could be wrong. Could be 84. But whenever you get an offense that is in the 80s, 84 yeah. offensive plays, yeah. 84 offensive plays for the Detroit Lions, that's not good. No. Any defense is going to get gassed there, and now you got a quick recovery. You're going to the Greenbrier. That's way too many snaps for an NFL football team, Shasky. That's not good on the defense. No, no, I, I think you're 100% correct there. And that, that also goes back to just not being able to, to, to play in football shape when you haven't played yep. any preseason games, B. Don't mm -hmm. you kind of expect that? Your point exactly. on D. Ford is well taken, though. Uh, the D. Ford was spectacular today. And yep. it wasn't just the speed. It was the strength. Mm -hmm. That was the thing mm -hmm. for me because it felt like he was pure speed um, at some points in 2019. And he lost a lot of that strength strength to be able to bull into people yep. how many times did he collapse two players into the quarterback i, I mean he, he looks so good and i thought eba cam looked really good i think yeah eba cam's gonna pop this year how about contavia street i mean look good look, first career I, the, sack hey, first career sack today i thought he looked really good again but that goes back to my point about there's a domino effect when you choose to pay someone like armstead yeah when you choose to move up in the draft and you know. go get kinlaw I need these top end guys to play like it. And right now, you know, Bosa's a top end player and he's playing like it. And Bosa, right. uh, D4, excuse me, you paid a premium for. He played like that today. I yeah. didn't see that from Eric Armstead nor Jimmy Ward. And that was frustrating for me. Yeah. Look, we're going to go back out to the lines in just a second. Sid, Connor, Bob, hang on tight. But I do want to get this point out because it's basically piggybacking off, of you, piggybacking off of you of what you just said about premium players. George Kittle played like a premium player yes. in a run game and a pass game. Debo Samuel, man, he made me forget about DK back <laughs> today oh. in a major way as a second-round pick. Debo Best reminded of me of a rookie career. season. Yeah, he reminded me of the season he had in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you look at the offensive line. Boy, I didn't mention Mike McGlinchey one time. No. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. He held up well in the pass game and the run game. You check, I thought a good job of springing holes open for Elijah Mitchell. But Eric Armstead, when Shambry from Arizona brought up Eric Armstead, and then you brought up Eric Armstead and the price tag that they paid, look, the D Ford, D Ford's name's not going away anytime soon. The fact that you traded away D Ford and turned around five minutes later, Buckner. it gave Eric Armstead, or excuse me, DeForest Buckner. Mm -hmm. You get you turn around to trade him to the Colts for a first round pick, which turned into Javon Kinlaw, who by the way doesn't play today because the same knee that he had issues with mm -hmm. coming out of college flared up on him. And then you get Eric Armstead where yeah, you know what? You're right. He did bring up Eric Armstead today. I don't know if he had a tackle. He was getting beat on bootlegs left and right. We know Jerichoff is going to do that. Mm -hmm. That's all he did with the L.A. Rams and Rashad McVay. And he did the same thing to you today. That bothers me, man, at number 91 was MIA today, man. We've given this guy. We, we've been hard on him, but this is why we've been hard on him, because yeah. you don't say his name on yeah. Sundays. Well, and it's only going to be worse now with the secondary having the issues that they have now with health, with Jason Verrett likely, mm -hmm. sadly, gone for the entire year with an ACL injury. I need these guys up front yeah. to get unbelievable pressure with four. Like, that's that's what I need. I need to not to be able to blitz. You saw they they dialed up a beautiful screen mm -hmm. at the exact time K1 Williams was coming in on a nickel blitz. Yep. It was a beautiful screen beautiful. To, to DeAndre Swift. And it's just Jimmy Ward and him in the open field, and he looked like a matador. I mean, I, I, Jimmy, if you're going to bump your lips all offseason, you got to at least put an arm out and try to I, make a tackle there. That looked bad. All right? What when they go that? watch the film, when they go watch the film, 
And when you've been talking about how Sean McVay hasn't picked on you before, he's scared to throw it to you. He's scared to throw it your way. People are going to look at the film and say, what? What was Jimmy Ward talking about? You know, what was he talking about this offseason? That was not good, Shasky. No, no, it wasn't good. And before we go back out to the lines, I thought Tart had a pretty good game today. I thought was Tart solid. was very active today. He was solid. But to me, the strength of the team right now is the edge rushers, yep. uh, Ibikam, Ford, Bosa, and Fred then also the linebackers. Greenlaw and Fred Warner were outstanding. Yes, yes. I was just going to mention uh, Fred Warner and Greenlaw. With, Greenlaw with the pick six right before halftime. Al to Shair. go up 28 to 10. 20, going up 28 to 10 there in the first half was monstrous. I thought Greenlaw played really, really well. Yeah, he did. Shanahan again. Trey Sermon. Everybody was talking about Trey Sermon, Trey Sermon. And I was excited about Trey Sermon. Well, Shanahan said, we only dressed three running backs. But those are the three that, after going through training camp and stuff, that we felt the three were we were going to go with. Wow. So the three was Mostert, Mitchell, and Hasty, uh, and not Trey Sermon. It's just really, really confusing there. Uh, let's go up to Sid. Sid, what's happening, man? You're on overtime here on 95.7 Games. Sid, out it. there in San Bruno. Hey, y'all. Uh, first, I want to talk about Brandon Ayuk. There's actually just reports saying that uh, Shanahan said that he was unlimited snaps because of his hamstring. So it's actually not, most likely not because of performance or anything like that. It's, it's He's a little injured. And the second thing I want to say is uh, Nick Bosa, he, he's being held on like every play. I, Thank I, you. I know he's a quiet, like shy guy. I'd love to see him mm -hmm. like get it, you know, tell the refs. Like I, I, he's, he's the kind of guy who probably wouldn't even tell the refs, you know? And then the last yeah. thing I want to say is, uh, you know, Kinlaw last year, you could see how important he was in terms of our run defense. You can see when he's missing this year, he's not clogging up that middle. You know, I would love to see him back you know, next week or the week after, and I think our run defense will, will tighten up right afterwards too. Good call. Good yeah. call, Sid. They, uh, they missed important. him up the middle, B. Let's be honest. They, they ran they right. Did. They did the same thing that McVay did with the Rams when they adjusted to the wide nine after game one. In game two, week 16, they got Goff out on the edges, and they ran their running backs hard up the middle. I saw that exact same uh, style deployed by the Detroit Lions. By the way, just for a split second, Deuce Staley put on some weight. He did. Hey, he's eating well. I'm not mad at Deuce Staley. I'm not mad at Deuce Staley. Look, he's the Lions. Eating well. <laughs> he's eating really well. Uh, by the way, Dan Campbell's a maniac on the sideline. Oh, line. my God. I kind of love it. I kind of love it. Uh, 13 plays, 82 yard drive for the Lions when they evened up the game. They took seven minutes off the clock, seven minutes and wow. 12 seconds, and they controlled the football game in the first half. You know, they were down big. They were down 31 to 10 at the half, but. 17 carries, 82, 88 yards in that first half on the ground, 5.2 yards a carry. How how are you the Lions, So You have the ball for 19 minutes and 14 seconds of the first half, yet you go into the locker room down 31 to 10. That can't happen. Hey. That can't happen at all. B Bosa blew up that fourth and one play early on. That was like, boom, right then and there. I thought it was a gutsy play for them to go for it. I said, take the points, take the points, take the points. Right. They didn't want to take the points. Then they went to take the points the second time yep. it presented itself, and they hooked the field goal. So no um, Niner defense looked absolutely stifling. They took their foot off the gas. And these they are the did. kind of games where this goes back to Armstead, and this is where I'm going with this. If you're only going to go like pass rush in the fourth quarter, that's not Eric Armstead's game. I need no, some dudes not. that can go hunt but, in the but, fourth but why quarter you pay, with the lead. Why, why pay him if he's not one of those guys? But that's my point. You're right. Why pay him if he's not one of those guys? Uh, real quick here, uh, beat reporters are reporting. Thanks to Sterling for this. Uh, Sterling's been phenomenal on his postgame show, giving us all the news from Shanahan at the podium. Shanahan suggested Brendan Ayuk's hamstring was the issue, okay. which has limited him okay. over the past 10 days. Okay. It has lowered his spot on the 49ers wide receiving pecking order. So Brendan Ayuk's hamstring seems to be the issue here. Although he was returning punts, if his hamstring is the issue, why is he returning punts? Because you could tweak your hamstring yeah. on a punt return. That, I mean, what's going on here? I, that that's I, I don't, good that question. doesn't make sense to me. Well, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Look, like. It, it, if it is the hamstring and we're taking that at face value, okay, that makes me feel a lot better about the situation. If it's right. not, I kind of agree with you. Why the hell would he be out there returning <laughs> punts? That's Let's bookmark that for tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Right. to 10 a.m. Yeah, l l no doubt about that. Let's go to Connor. Connor, you're on overtime here on 95.7 The Game. You will be the last call of the show. Make it a good one, Connor. It's been a nice debut to overtime uh, for the 2021 football season. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yep, we got you. Awesome. Okay, well, so 
Bache has mentioned that, uh, you know, Eric Armstead, the captain, and I want to I want to make the case for why, because, you know, after that onside kick bounces off a of Kittle, after Debo just, you know, fumbles, and every one of us as 49er fans are, like, panicking, captains have composure when plays are breaking down. So I want to take everyone back to those last four downs where Goff has the ball and he's feeling himself. It's second and ten. The play breaks down because our front four is getting at Goff, and Goff thinks he's going to be kind of slick, so he thinks he can make a run for it, right? The Lions got this momentum. The 49ers are losing their mind. A captain had the presence of mind to know that's exactly what Goff was doing. And so if you look, second and 10, Goff scrambles to the right end. He's pushed out of bounds for only a one-yard gain by our man Eric Armstead. Armstead saw that play happening, and he was the only one with the presence of mind to get after Goff. The second and ten leads to the third and nine, leads to the fourth and nine, leads to the Niners don't have the same panic right now that we had after week one last year. And I really do chalk that up to two captains. I chalk that up to Jimmy, who I think did a great job. Great game. Again, in the great heat game. of battle. He was awesome. And also Eric Armstead. Thanks, well, let, let, me just, let me just play counter on that one. Okay, he had a great one play against one of the slowest six quarterbacks in the NFL and Jared Goff. <laughs> That's what you get right there, Eric Armstead. You got paid eighteen point five million last year. You're making thirteen million, six percent of the cap this year. I expect more than you to just rush Jared Goff out of bounds for only a one yard gain. I mean, come on, get yeah. out of here. Yeah, no doubt about that. Quickly here, let's go to some scores around the league. Right now at halftime, the Packers are down to the Saints in Jacksonville. Famous Jamison company up 17-3 to on the Green Bay Packers. That second half is just getting underway That's there. Tasty. The Cleveland, Hey, the Cleveland Browns in Kansas City. Hey, Cleveland, hey, this. hey Kansas City doesn't have the honey badger. Browns up 22-10 to with the ball at the Chiefs' 36-yard line with about 50 seconds left in the first half. Patriots, Dolphins, the Bama Bowl, Tua versus Mac Jones. All knotted up at 10 apiece. Broncos up on the Giants at halftime, 10-7. And then you got the Steelers going to Buffalo, beating the Bills. Everybody's trendy AFC Super Bowl pick. Bills go down to Pittsburgh at home, 23-16. Eagles all over the Falcons. That's the Niners' week two opponent. Eagles beat the Falcons up. Going to be a long year for Atlanta. Philly wins 32-6. to Bengals in overtime over the Vikings. How about Kirk Cousins? How you like that? Bengals get the season opening win over the Vikings, 27-24. Cardinals, Shasky. Cardinals, they go to Tennessee and beat up on the Titans, 38-13. Kyler Murray accounts for all five touchdowns for the Cardinals, including two to DeAndre Hopkins. Seahawks over the Colts, 28-16. So those two teams start off 1-0. Right now, the NFC West is undefeated. Chargers beat the Washington football team 20-16. Fitzpatrick knocked out of that game, Shasky. Knocked out of that game uh, for the Washington football team. Panthers hang on to beat the Jets 19-14. Darnold gets revenge over his former team. Zach Wilson and Robert Sala lose their debuts for the New York Jets. And the Texans beat the Jaguars 37-21. Breyer. How long is Urban Meyer going to survive? I was just thinking that. That, to me, is the loss of the day. Forget the Bengals huh. beating the, the Vikings or the Bills losing to the Steelers. To me, the loss of the day, by two and a half touchdowns, the Texans wow. mop up on the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. He throws three interceptions today. I think Urban Meyer's one and done. Yeah, he might be one and done. Might be one and done. Hey, look, Shasky, what a start to the season. Kickoff show in overtime. I'm going to shout out Evan Giddings. Yeah, great, great job, job producing today, this bad boy. And that guy, Sterling. Hey, how about that, Sterling? Sterling doing a great job here oh, on overtime yeah. producing <laughs> this bad boy. Oh, of course, he's going to hit the Sterling. <laughs> Sterling bit it. Sterling bit it. Now he's going to start tweeting away here in just a second. But nice job, Sterling. Don't go great job on the post game show. Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> no more tweeting at Schefter. You learned uh, your lesson there. Hey, hey, we all been dominated on Twitter before. We've been dunked on before. It won't be the first time. It won't be the last time for all of us. Good Jasky, job today, good job guys. as always. Good job. Morning roast starting at 6 a.m. tomorrow. 6, 6 a.m. tomorrow, Monday through Friday, the morning roast. We'll be all over this bad boy. We'll have takes and more of your phone calls. And by the way, Twitch, thanks to everybody on Twitch. Brought to you by Xfinity. A lot of fun today on the text line as well. But don't go anywhere. Look, I told you guys, 95-7 the game has the best 49ers postgame coverage in this region. Jim Colesmore. Kyle Matchett coming up next. They'll break down this win for the 49ers. They beat the Lions. 
Week one, 41 to 33. They held on for dear life there at the end. Not the greatest finish in the world, but they do get the W. They'll have injury reports. More on Jason Verrett and Raheem Mostert, all that stuff. So don't go anywhere, folks. We're signing off. Coles and Kyle Madsen will take it over here on 95 of the game. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. It's your boy, Bonnie.